marching orders and all you have to decide as you stand today is where that ship will sail. There's an old quote that states 80% of life is showing up. Now, showing up means many different things to many different people, but the idea is not complicated. You can't do anything of significance unless you have first and foremost arrived. Which brings me to today. See, I had a list of uh, concepts I've been excited to talk about, things that uh, I've either read or have been recent epiphanies in my life. And I can't wait to share those with you. But this morning, oh, let me tell you about this morning. Right, finding the energy to do anything felt like trying to squeeze blood from a rock. I woke up with a headache, exhausted because I didn't sleep at all the night before. And you know that feeling, like when you didn't sleep at all the night before, you're oddly constantly reminding yourself the next day that you didn't sleep and everything just felt off. And really, as I'm speaking now, things still kind of do. And so I got up and I sort of played with the idea of taking the day off altogether. Right? Maybe I'm due for one anyway. I thought about resting. Uh, the, the little devil with the pitchfork on my shoulder continuously uh, reminded me how great sleep would feel. And I was sitting there, you know, kind of weighing my options. Took some ibuprofen, started the coffee, sat down on the couch. Uh, just kind of looking at the wall, what to do, what to do. But realistically, I knew. And I want to explain why. Over the years, I've taught myself through repetition that sitting down and writing and recording, unless I plan intentionally to do otherwise, is a non-negotiable. It's helped me see that the goal in any meaningful pursuit should be getting to the point where despite the circumstances, you show up. Stephen Pressfield, whose voice often echoes in my mind when I come face to face with these situations, he wrote, art is war between ourselves and the forces of self-sabotage that would stop us from doing our work. The artist is a warrior. Artist being anyone uh, bringing something to the world that does not yet exist. And he goes on to describe the battle with the mind over sitting down in that chair and writing when we know we must write but don't want to. When a tired or distracted mind begins looking for off-ramps, as mine had clearly started doing this morning. These seemingly trivial moments when any rational soul could argue for the validity of postponing their date with Microsoft Word, well, they come to matter more than ever. Because greatness is a byproduct of intentionality. If you become accustomed to breaking promises to yourself, if you leave that door cracked for exceptions here and there, it will ultimately be kicked open. And that's why I inject little reminders like that into my life to keep that mental muscle working. For example, there can never be dishes left in my sink when I go to bed. Why? Because if I skip it once, there will always exist reasons to skip again. It's a very easy thing to not care about. Because here is the reality. Progress is a lifestyle. Growth is a lifestyle. At least if we're talking about any meaningful type of evolution. I just finished reading uh, It Takes What It Takes by Trevor Moad. One of those three to five hour listens on Audible, depending on how fast it's playing, really packs a punch. And I'm gonna be diving into uh, a few of his concepts a little more in the coming weeks, but one thing he discusses that I found 
uh, incredibly valuable is the illusion of choice. And what the illusion of choice highlights is that there are a set of behaviors that must be carried out to be effective. The idea of uh, alternate routes is an illusion. There are no choices when it comes to what's necessary. We know what must be done to win. Now, knowing that is one thing. Knowing that and having to propel yourself to action when you feel like garbage is something different entirely. But that's why it's so valuable to get to that place where you can take the emotion out, remove the internal deliberation, and automate the things you know are going to help push you to be that better version of yourself. In other words, you show up for you, period, and that is a non-negotiable. That's the level we all need to get to. And I'm thinking about this, drawing parallels to a lot of different aspects uh, of my day, right? The interval training I have this afternoon. When you're exhausted, 40 minutes in and are switching from squats to mountain climbers or whatever it is, right? Instructor makes the announcement. I don't think about anything. I don't give myself a chance to try and rationalize any weakness. I know if this is important to me, keep that door shut. No thinking, just doing next. Simply doing what you always do, what you've signed up for, cannot be self-perceived as some monumental sacrifice. No, it's just what you do. It's neutral. Sometimes you feel like it. Sometimes you don't. But you do what you do. And that puts you on track to accomplish some incredible things. And so remembering this, ultimately pushed me through that studio door this morning and placed me down right in front of my mic. Sure, I had to adjust some things. Definitely picked some, you know, mellower music. There's gonna be no crescendos today or my head will explode. But this is not torture. In fact, I'm really happy with the way the episode's turning out. I would have missed out on uh, something that I think is gonna be pretty valuable in a variety of ways. But what I'm telling myself is that this is not a victory. It's certainly not defeat. It's just what I do. And so the question worth asking yourself when facing the adversity life presents in whatever arena you are in is are you willing to show up for you? Can you turn that internal deliberation switch off when it comes to uh, the necessities before you? Minimize that rationalizing that I battled with this morning. We don't need or want that. There should be no thinking, no crack doors, no metaphorical dishes in the sink. If you decide something is important and you sign that dotted line, when it's time to execute, you act and then you move directly on to the next. The goal is to not even negotiate with weakness. Now that's not to say Pressfield's aforementioned war of art won't rage on as you journey to the new horizons you've set out for. But just like anything, it's an understanding that will help you focus, will help you say no to the distractions and the minutia and continue writing your story, constructing your reality line by line and piece by piece. Mark Twain said the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. The first gets you into the show and the second asks, what will you do with your time here? What will you make of this sunrise? Because we only get so many. 
think there's immense value in understanding that each and every one of us are here to leave this place better than we found it. To stand up when we could be sitting down, step out and make something of the chaotic and often hard to understand world around us. When you realize the miracle that is your existence, when you understand the almost impossible odds of you being here, thinking, feeling, breathing in the air around you, you begin to see the value of today. Because it's not an obligation, it's a currency, the most precious of commodities. Today is your time to step into that new version of yourself, to see something more so that you can begin the process of creating something more. Because the truth is life will always be what you decide it is. If you walk up to your window, look through the blinds and decide what you see is the finale, the final script, that's exactly what it will be. But if you see right now as a beautiful beginning, the initiation of the ride of a lifetime, a transport to the next version of you and the next and the next, then you are signing up for a world without limits. A world where you can feel what it's like to be tested and endure, to be lost but find your way, to build something meaningful out of the seemingly meaningless. That's why you're here. That's what it means to truly live. Today is your day, your chance. Don't let it slip away from you. Don't be fooled into thinking it's less than it really is. It is your ticket to infinity. A journey that starts when you decide it does. When you look out at that vast unknown and say, I'm not going to settle for anything less than a life of adventure. I want the challenges, the turbulence, the losses and the battles. They will bring me to a place I could never have arrived at otherwise. You get from life what you give. So give it all. Leave no path unwalked, no stone unturned. Today is the most important day of your life because it will connect the you of yesterday to the limitless you of every day that comes next. It may be that our greatest gift in life is that we're always one decision away from transformation. We're always one decision away from a new path with new experiences, new beliefs, new identity, one decision away from a totally different life. It's almost incomprehensible that all the days leading up to now, everything we knew ourselves to be can be discarded and left with one swing of an ax gone. What is more miraculous than that? We live at the intersection of two imaginary worlds, right? the past and the future. The past is gone and essentially meaningless, yet as the provider of our identity, it still rules over us. Our sense of who we are comes from our collection of past memories. That imaginary world of yesterday, like the elephant tied to the chair with the rope, it hasn't realized it's strong enough to break free. It doesn't know that what confines him is not the rope, but acceptance of a lie. And that's what the past, that's what identity is, a lie. We are not yesterday, we are right now. And from the trivial things to the significant things, we get wrapped up in that lie. We overlook the gift of control we have over our future. What does it mean to say, I'm not a morning person? That in your past, you hadn't conditioned yourself to wake up early? Okay. What does it mean to say, oh, I let people walk all over me? That in your past, you didn't stand up for yourself? 
What does it mean to say I'm awkward or shy or I struggle with writing or running or public speaking? So maybe you did. But what does that have to do with right now? What does that have to do with realizing the control you have over your life? Because simply realizing you can disconnect from these narratives, that they are not you, is a superpower. Realizing that calling yourself a bad student because you failed a test is like never taking off your raincoat because it rained yesterday. It's like, no, the sun is out, adapt. And once you realize right now is the beginning of the rest of your life, you can start making little changes. Identify not who you were, but who you'd love to be and move towards it. Read The Power of Habit and Atomic Habit so that you can understand change isn't crazy or big or scary. It's moving little things in your life around so that they work for you, not against you. Start waking up and thinking about not what has happened, but what can happen, not what can go wrong, but what can go right. You are always one decision away from a totally different life because you're always one decision away from change, from walking away from the narratives that you have accepted. And so remember that, but remember it not just when things are fine. Remember it when you're struggling, when you feel restless or uneasy, unsure, uninspired, sad, angry, not content with the reflection in the mirror. When you feel that negativity, you're not looking at what can be, you're looking at what you have been. And there's no room at the table for that distraction. Not when you can reach out and start building something new. Not when you can put on a new pair of shoes and walk down a different path. You are always one decision away from a totally different life. And that decision should be first and foremost to choose future over past. Your next step over the last one, choose your ideal world and start building. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to day four. Let's just check and make sure that we got everyone in the room and make sure you can hear me and see me and all of the above. We've got a really exciting day ahead of us today. Um, We're going to be discussing probably one of the most important things, if not the most important thing when it comes to investing, and that is risk. And we're going to be discussing, you know, you can go into the complexities of risk, and we're going to be discussing some of the ways that I believe that you can manage risk in the most easy way, um, safe and simply in terms of risk. So good morning to everyone. Uh, Nice to see so many people bright and early uh, from wherever you are in the world. And uh, wonderful, all the comments and everything coming through on Facebook and WhatsApp and everything in between. So yeah, wonderful. So without further ado, I wanna get started because we've got a jam-packed day today and we've got some incredible guests that are joining us as well. So let me share my screen and let's get going. So, Make sure you can all see the screen. We should be good to go. So we're on to day four. Can you believe it? It's been quite a journey. Risk management, mitigating risk, mastering the investment, diversification. Again, tips for success. I go through this every day. Pay full attention. Be here present. Take notes. Try to teach others. Commit to action. Have fun. You know, set yourself goals. And most importantly, take action. Remember that the resources guide is there. People were asking us in the VIP yesterday, et cetera. um, The resources guide is there. A lot of the links that we're putting in are in the resources guide in terms of that process. In terms of the communication, we've got WhatsApp to let you know what's going on and to put the important things like the replays, et cetera, up. And then we've got the Facebook group so we can communicate and collaborate as a group of like-minded individuals. So to remind you, the prize winner for yesterday was Linda Welsh. And um, if you're still interested in joining the VIP, we still got two power sessions to go. Plus, you'll get the recordings from the last three, and you'll get the recordings for all of the sessions. Because uh, on the weekend, the the recordings will come down uh, for the sessions. So, why are we here? Again, very important to be clear on what is the objective. The objective is globally diversified passive income. How do we do that? We diversify across countries, currencies, assets partners, and time. That's how we do it. 
And if you take a big mountain and you need to climb a big mountain, you don't try and do it all in, you know, all at once. I've climbed Kilimanjaro. Trust me, I know. Highest mountain in Africa. It took us five days to get up the mountain. And so what you do is you've got a goal. You know, you want to get up the top of the highest mountain in Africa, Kilimanjaro. You break it down into mini goals. So each day we had to hit a camp over five days. And then, you know, literally, you know, each day you had tasks and activities that you had to do. No different from a challenge. It's exactly how it's been set up. So what were the action steps from yesterday? The first was research and identify at least three different investment strategies, passive investment, active investing, value investing. I know that some of the partners that we interviewed um, speak about this. And uh, so it's good to start understanding what these uh, terms are. Create a hypothetical diversified investment portfolio with the different asset classes, allocating percentages. So again, in a perfect world, if you had $1,000 or $10 million or $100 million, how would you like to have your portfolio balanced um, over the next couple of years? And then, you know, seriously consider diversification mastermind. You know, it's, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that now quickly because a bunch of people asked me some questions. And then share one key takeaway. I say this every day. There's nothing more valuable than giving away your knowledge. It's going to reinforce it for you. Plus, you're going to share a gift with someone else. So go and share it out there. Share the knowledge so that others are getting it. The next uh, action step, which was the gold one, and I expect you to you know, come back and do this probably at another time, but research the different asset classes and their historical performance and research and compare at different invest investment vehicles. Now, if you want to make it easy for yourself and you don't want to have to go and do it all on your own, and you want it kind of done for you, um, I've done all of that as part of Wealth Going Global, uh, which is our home study course. So let's just recap on the mastermind. I finished off yesterday. Why do you join the mastermind? Well, it's simple. People change five times faster if they, you know, in a group, in a like-minded group of people going together than if they're in a one-to-one -one coach, consultant, or therapist. If you've got a collection of people who are committed, all driven, and so want to make the right changes happen, and you give them a leader to follow who's willing to get in the trenches. I think you probably realized after four days, I'm more than willing to get in the trenches. And all of a sudden, you, you, you will start to feel rapid, real life and business transformation. That's what the mastermind is all about. How do we do it? Well, we took a fairly complex process of creating globally diversified passive income. Our focus is to get to a minimum passive income of at least $5,000 as quickly as possible. And how do we do it? Well, we break it up into five steps. I fundamentally believe that, that simplicity is power. Step one is the outcome. You and I work one-to-one -one and we get very, very clear on what is the outcome you're wanting to achieve. Then we have your starting point. And together between myself and Calio, we analyze your property portfolio. We look at your pension fund, your retirement annuities, your RAs, whatever it is, your tax, your structures. We make sure it's efficient. It's about optimizing what you've got. So now we know where you want to go. We know where you're starting. Then it's about building a plan. We call it a wealth plan to get from A to B. So you want to get here, you're here. How do you get from A to B? And then again, most people don't even have a plan. But for those that do, it's about executing on the plan. So we run a monthly rhythm, no more than three to four hours a month. People say, I don't have time. Trust me, if you don't have three to four hours a month, you're never, ever going to achieve your objective that you're looking to achieve. Something like globally diversified passive income. So what do we do on a monthly basis? We have an accountability mindset and execution session. So that's uh, where the group and you've got group dynamics. I hold you to account. We hold each other to account. It's about the mindset. It's about going in the right direction. It's about staying in a towards state. And then finally, we got the investment rhythms. And every single month, we, we work with Calio. They come in, they tell us what's happening in the global markets. They help us with asset allocation. We go deep into one asset class every month. We meet live. Uh, an incredible partner from around the world teaching us about an asset class. We then invest and, you know, it's about building that globally diversified passive income. And so people ask me, you know, this is our aspirational ladder, you know, really at the top of the ladder, call it private banking, call it, you know, first class on an airplane. If you're on an airplane, you've got economy, you've got business, you've got first class. First class, you know, on the airplane is um, our mastermind. It's where you work with me personally. You work with um, Calio personally. And you're with a group, a small group of like-minded people that are literally wanting to build globally diversified passive income. And I mean, you've heard testimonials from Cynthia and Niels, and you know, there's many, many others in terms of what people are achieving. So if that's something you would like, if that resonates with you, then my suggestion is just go to apply 
Um, I can only onboard two to three people at a time because it's 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 um it's very time consuming for myself and also for the Calio team. Um, so it's it's very um, bespoke and unique, um, which is why I set up a one to one meeting. Um, and we just sort of make sure that it makes sense for you, it makes sense for us from a collaboration perspective. So yeah, just go to that. Um, and it, it, it is in a um, on the assumption you qualify it's on a first come uh, first serve basis. Just lastly, I don't think there's a better time. I'm going to say this a few times today than right now. You know, any um, you know good business people, you know any entrepreneurs, any big corporate people understand that you your Q4, your October, November, December is so important in terms of planning for the next year. The success of your next year is determined by the planning of now, and and there's no better time right now to get all set up so that you literally hit the ground running next year and make 2024 the year that you finally achieve the objectives you've been looking to achieve in this space. To remind you, as we get started today, there's no financial advice that's been given. It's literally our opinions, our knowledge, our mistakes, but we want to share with you so that you can learn from us, so that you can grow, so that you can be empowered and you can make your own decisions. Again, to remind you, this is the formula. Why are we here? Globally diversified passive income. It's about diversifying across countries, currencies, assets, partners, and time. And I had a dilemma, and it was quite a big dilemma, because if we go into risk, and if we go into partners, and how to manage risk, we could talk for three hours today, literally in theory, like no debate. There's so much substance to this. I've been doing it 28 years. There's so many lessons that I could teach you. On top of that, we've got partners. So we got three incredible partners that I've invited to come and speak. And I kind of expected when the partners came that they'd only give us kind of 15 minutes of their time. And each of them, you know, if you take, you know, um, all of them, they've all given us like real so much value in terms of their time. But the problem is, like they end up being 30, 40 minutes in these conversations. And there's just no ways to do it all and to respect your time in the process. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to, you know, if you take an iceberg analogy, Today, I'm just going to share the top of the iceberg. I'm going to share some of the fundamentals. If you want the substance below the iceberg, we literally have the home study course, Wealth Going Global. And in that section, we've literally got partners. And you can literally go through the partners section. So just to give you an example here, if I was to go to um, this, so, so literally, this is the, the home study course, Wealth Going Global. You can go and choose your countries, your currencies, your assets. But if you go to your partners, you can see that there's the training of partners here, and then you've got all the materials. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today, the cheat sheets, um, the white papers, and even the, the, the due diligence systems, the checklists, everything are here. So yesterday, the VIPs were asking about this, and I said, yep, it all exists. It's all here. Um, but what I've decided to do today is to utilize the time to speak to partners, because literally speaking to real people, real partners, is so valuable. And the home study stuff is there and you can do that um, should you wish. So let's crack on because I've got Salwin joining us and I want to make sure that um, you get you know, ample time with him. So what is uh, partners all about and how do you manage risk? The power of partnership, investing globally with confidence. The mission will help investors conf you know, be confident in their ability to choose the right partners. How do you do it from a partners and due diligence perspective? So we've got a bunch of resources and we're going to share them with you. Remember, you've got the resources page, literally go along to the resources and you can read about some of our partners. You can read about our due diligence and how it actually works in terms of the process, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I got asked this in the VIP yesterday. And if you were going to choose a partner and I like to simplify things, I like to kind of take complex ideas and make them simple. So I could talk for five hours about all the mistakes I've made and what you should and shouldn't do when choosing the right partners. But in simple terms, I can bring it down to three things. The first is that you want to look for a partner that has a 10-year track record. Okay, so if you look at any of the partners that, that I've invited to speak, whether it's at the Mastermind or at Asset Mastery or even on this event, they've all got 10-year plus track records. And the reason being is that anyone can make money in a rising market. But it's when the market changes or collapses that you see people's true metal. And if you take that into account, if you take Gary Sachs, you know, he's been a developer since 1988 in London. He's been through a number of different cycles. Uh, market cycles tend to, you know, on average be every 10 years. So that's why 10 years is a good, a good parameter. And if you take what happened in 2008, 2009, 
all the developers were going bankrupt. He had, you know, hundreds of millions of pounds worth of debt from the Irish banks. And they were, you know, literally everyone was panicking. And so rather than going and asking the bank, you know, because he couldn't sell the properties. So he used his management company and he just managed, you know, rented out all the properties. And because he rented them out, he could pay the bank. And the bank was actually very happy because they were getting the mortgage paid when everyone else was defaulting. And he ended up paying the bank their entire amount of money. And because of that, they, they absolutely love him to bits. No investors lost any money and the bank didn't lose any money. And today, you know, obviously he's their hero now. What's interesting though, is if he had gone and asked them if he could manage the property, they would have said no, because that's not how banks operate. Um, so he didn't ask. He did the famous Richard Branson saying where he literally just did it and asked for forgiveness. And that's the type of thing you're looking for in a partner, someone who's got the ability to, to get through the problems. Because trust me, if you're wanting to manage risk, the number one thing is your partner and how they behave when it's not working in terms of um, you know, the market. So that's the first thing. The second thing, oh, and just sorry, one last thing in terms of track record, like they need to be specific in one area. Like someone can't be um, doing 20 different things. You know, they can't be flipping houses on the one side and doing industrial buildings on the other side and running a private equity company on the other side. Like they need to be specific. They need to be area focused. They need to be niche focused. They need to be, you know, literally in, in a geography. All of that sort of stuff is, is really, really important. The next thing is that they need like that specific market knowledge. So that's kind of what I'm referring to. So they've got the, they've got the track record but they also are specific in an asset class. Like that's what they do. You know, if you go to Gary and you say, hey, London residential inst at an institutional level, large scale development, like that's what he's done for, you know, 30, 40 years. If you go and ask him to do, I don't know, venture capital, like that's not what he does. Like I guarantee you, if he does venture capital, he'll do it with a partner. And the third thing is that they put their own money in the deal. This is really, really important. It's about alignment of interest. What a lot of partners like to do is you put your money in at risk. They take all the fees on the front end. And if you make money, well, great. They've already been paid. And so what's really important is that they must put their own money into a deal. It must be treated the same way that your money's been treated. And you're going to see from Judd today when, when we have the interview with Judd, how, how he structures deals. Um, I know that the Calio team are very similar, where the entire alignment is set up with the investors so the, when, when the investors win, they win on the back end. And that's the way that you want it to work. Um, you want them to have their own skin in the game. You want them tied to the same ship. Because what happens is that, you know, if you, you know, if things go wrong, and by the way, in investing, you know, sometimes things go wrong. It just is what it is. But if they've got their money in the deal, and if they've like secured the debt and, you know, got their own house on the line or whatever, then trust me, they're going to be there trying to help you sort it out in terms of that process. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, we, we can all go home now. <laughs> That's it. Uh, the, three, the three golden rules when it comes to partners and managing risk in terms of it. There's one other thing that I wanted to share with you. And, um, you know, I've spoken a lot about this, uh, this mastery. Let me stop sharing my screen here. So I got asked um, when I did Wealth Going Global about one of the biggest mistakes that I'd made and what I learned from it. And it was a brilliant question because we've all made mistakes. And um, if I look at it in, in some of the deals where we've, where we've had big problems, so as an example, we've got a big problem in, um, in, in Australia, in a new development in Australia that just hasn't worked out and you know, we own a big hole in the ground. And the reason being, and if I look at it and I say, well, what can I learn from that and how can I make sure that never happens again, is that my, my previous partners that I worked with were, um, and again, I'm not saying that one philosophy is right and one is wrong, but the old school me methodology, the old school thinking was that you had to be in control. You had to own the whole thing. Like, so you went out and whether it was local or international, you go and buy the whole thing, you own the whole thing. So what happens if you take the capital stack in a, in a building is that generally you get 60% from the bank and you get 30% from private equity and, 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 and then you get about 10% in equity, which is cash. Okay, and this is where the investors come in. And in terms of risk, you know, the bank is at the least risk because they've got the first mortgage. The private equity tends to have the second risk. And then the equity takes the most risk, but it also has the capital growth. It has the upside. So in the old school mindset, you, you put in 95% of the money, like you own the entire building so that you effectively have all the control. The problem with that 
is that you've got a massive concentration. All your money is concentrated in one place. Yes, you have the control, but if but if something goes wrong, now you have to fix it. So as an example, uh, this group of um, this the whole investment committee, whatever, were out of Pretoria. Um, they they did this development in Australia and Brisbane, and then it didn't work. The developer didn't didn't deliver develop like he was supposed to, and so now you know they've had to take back over the ownership of the property, and now they're trying to manage a development long distance. Okay, and now you've got to be very active. And the last thing you want to be is try to be a developer in a different country. Okay, so the problem with this is, in, in my opinion, is that it's it's a scarcity mindset. It's it's an old school way of thinking. It's all about control. It's about trying to put in and control everything. But the problem is when it doesn't work, then you've got to do everything. And you've got to be active. It's 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 really really hard. The the new age way of doing it is by diversification and partnerships. So if you take that same capital stack. You've got sixty percent in the bank, thirty percent in private equity, ten percent of in the in the equity. But rather than putting all the money in, put in just ten percent of it. So, as an example, you're investing in I don't know Manhattan, and they need to raise ten million dollars, and you're only putting in one, one and a half, maybe two million dollars tops. Now, as international investors, you're only twenty percent, and eighty percent of it is Americans in America. If something doesn't happen. You know, and and you you know you've got Americans there that can literally fix it. Okay, so you you're more diversified, so that money can be spread across different developments. If you've hopefully learned that over the last four days, it just makes logical sense. You've got less control. Yep, arguably you've got less control. You're not a majority shareholder in, in, in it, but ultimately you've got local investors. Like it would be far better in that Australian deal if you had 80% of the capital owned by Australians in Australia, because then they would have the incentive to get it fixed. And so ultimately, it allows you to be an armchair investor, more passive, have less control, be more passive, and ironically, have a lot less risk. And that's why I think it's an abundant mentality. And so this is a big learning that I've had over the last 10 years, because my previous partners were all about this old school, try and control everything. And yeah, quite a few of them worked, but the ones that don't work are an absolute nightmare. Whereas this is a far better philosophy because you work with far better partners, bigger projects, you own a smaller piece of the pie, but you've got a lot less risk and you can be an armchair. And in simple terms, you can diversify, which is why we're here. Okay, so I can see that someone has joined. So we're gonna need to rock and roll quick, quick in terms of this process uh, now. So this is our investment process. You're gonna hear Judd uh, talk about it um, on the video and how extensive it was in terms of it. And it brings me up myth number eight, which is I can do due diligence. You know, there's a great saying that says it takes 10 years to master something. For 28 years, we've been putting this together, not just myself, but my partners. And often what happens when you put a process together, it's, you, you don't put it together because of what worked. You put it together because of what didn't work. You know, I wrote the book Property Going Global back in 2013. It was actually endorsed by Clem Sunter. And, um, and, and it was really 80% of people that invest overseas at the time were losing money. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, we need to write a book to teach people where to get the right information and how to find the right partners. We evolved that into GIDS, our global investment due diligence system. And in Wealth Going Global, I go into this in module four around partners. I go into this in a lot of detail. How do you, you know, look at the macro economics? How do you look at the international currency? How do you look at the micro? Like which cities do you invest in? How do you do the returns on a, on a, on a deal? How do you do the partner due diligence? How do you structure a deal properly? How do you do the pre-purchase due diligence? How do you maximize your investments? How do you actually get a digital wallet? And ultimately, how do you do this on an ongoing basis? So I shared with the people at um, in that course, our two systems, which is GIDS1, which is our residential system, and GIDS2, which is our commercial system. And these are, they're extensive. I mean, they're 30, 30 page documents. Um, in terms of, so I tend to say to people, you can go out and you can do all your own due diligence, you can create your own systems, or you can literally copy um, ours, which is a metamorphosis of a whole bunch of sophisticated investors. And even yesterday in the VIP room, they were like, don't you have a checklist? I was like, yep, we do. It's a 132 point checklist. And that's all available in the wealth going global. In terms of um, how we select our partners, there's, there's a methodology out there around the world called 10 year established, you know, developed and emerging. It's literally in your resources. You can go and read about it um, so that you can start to understand the different types of partners. And to give you an example of just some of the partners we've done in the last two years, 
Feldman Equities, you can see here, yeah, they've got over 3 billion under management. They've got 100 million of their own dollars invested. They've got over 100 years experience. They've survived seven recessions. We did this building with them right in the middle of, of COVID. We closed in December 2020. Um, I never thought I would own a building like this. Um, and it was paying uh, over a 9% um, cash on cash. You know, MAG is an industrial group. Again, 43 properties, uh, average return of 18% a year, average cash on cash of 9%. And we did um, this industrial deal with them. Again, an 8% cash on cash. Uh, this one was actually a debt deal at 10%. This is a structured note that we did with um, BNP Paribas and Cashbox. And again, actually had a 15% return um, and was interesting enough, Shirai compliant as well. Um, this is, you're going to learn from DWG today, Judd, this is a, a deal that we did with them, 8% uh, deal, again, an industrial um, logistics building uh, in America. And it brings me to myth number nine. And one of the things that um, people think is that they can go out there and they can get access to their best deals. And I know that someone's going to talk about this, but the power of your network. And if you're wanting to get really good deals in England, Australia, America, Europe, you know, just start there. It's virtually impossible to kind of do it. I don't care if you've got hundred million dollars. So, you know, it's really, really important that through partnership, you know, you can get access to the quality partners that are dealing at the institutional level. And also the benefit of buying as um, a collective together. You know, if you've got a million dollars or $10 million, it's not a huge amount of money. In the big picture of the world, it's really not a lot of money. But if we bring a whole bunch of us together, then we've got the buying power of the institutions which is why the caliber of partners talk to us. So if you want to do it yourself, you can literally, these are all the different levels that you should be looking at between due diligence, brokers, lawyers, tax, compliance, banking, you know, data, everything. Or you can literally use a platform like Wealth Migrate where there's four simple steps. And all you worry about is the stuff above the iceberg, knowing that all the stuff below the iceberg is taking place. So what does that mean for you? Well, you and I as an investor, we have our investor bank account. We invest directly in our digital wallet. So we work with a company called Lemonway. They're the biggest digital wallet provider in Europe. They're protected by European law. Uh, they've got 8 million wallets. And each one of you would have a unique and bespoke wallet to you. It's your personal wallet. Then you would uh, link onto the marketplace, the Wealth Migrate marketplace. We would bring an investment opportunity. So like Selwyn's going to talk about uh, an opportunity in Manhattan as an example. Then basically we would aggregate. So that means we bring all the investors together. Um, we put it through a tax efficient structure and then we invest in the asset. We own the asset together. And then when the asset pays a dividend, it goes straight back into your investor wallet. Hopefully you can see that it's, it's, it's safe and it's simple and it takes all the complexity out. So how do you manage risk and compliance? Again, we've got resources. You can literally go and read about our deal risk categories and compliance and risk management. We need to update this because we're really excited. Uh, 10 days ago, we got our FCA approval, which is the um, UK. So we now um, uh, are a juristic rep under an FCA approved um, partner for FSP, financial service provider in the UK. Um, so that's all in the, in the financial space. I've already spoken about Lemonway, you know, European cash custody, multi-layered compliance. You've got a transactional wallet and you've got data protection and investor ring fencing. What's also important is you've got external cash custody. We don't touch your money. That's why we use Lemonway. You've got portfolio manager governance. You've got designated investor accounts. You've got ring fence deals. You've got you know, corporate members. You've got external cash custody and you've got operational investment segregation. So I know it's a lot of big words, um, but, but it's all stuff to protect investors um, and, and to protect their money. And then lastly, how do you select a deal? So, you know, again, when, when you go into Wealth Going Global, this goes into it in more detail, plus in the resources. But the way that they look at deals, you've got risk and you've got return. And there's four types. You've got core, core plus, value add, and opportunistic. Core plus is the lowest risk and tends to be the lowest return. It might be a, an amazing building in central London with a government employee in, you know, in Green Park or in Manhattan or something. Um, and then a new development, which is on the other side of the fence, which is higher risk, higher return, you know, would be opportunistic. And again, you can go and read all about it. And then with regards to tax and structuring, a lot of people ask about tax and structuring. You know, my philosophy is be very, very careful of the cheap stuff. You know, you go off to the Seychelles or the BVI or the Isle of Man and, you know, these companies try and stick you in a box. And it's why I love working with Calio because they don't put you in a box. They understand what you're looking for. They create a bespoke solution for you. You heard Niels talk about it yesterday. 
And, um, and that's, that's what I love. So, you know, it really is something important if you're wanting to talk about tax and structuring. For me, the mastermind is a no-brainer um, because of the partnership that we've got with, with Calio. So the last three things that I wanted to give you before I kind of hand over is, um, you know, there's three white papers we got. We got the five laws of building wealth through real estate. So that's for people that are like beginners. We've got the five keys to offshore real estate investment success. That's for intermediates. And then finally, we've got the four ways to expand your global real estate portfolio through strategic partnerships. And all three of them are in your resources uh, where we're at. So in summation, if I was to take everything I've just said about risk and how to manage risk, it comes down to two things. You need to have the right information and the right partners. The right information and the right partners. Reminding you, this is the formula. You're wanting to build globally diversified passive income across countries, currencies, assets, partners, and time. Now, I want to ask you a, a question. Okay, I want to I want to change your mindset completely. Just before I hand over to Salwin, I want to I want you I want you to have a paradigm shift quickly. So, if I was to ask you an extremely direct question, what about if today you were diagnosed with a serious medical condition, and the only way to save your health and vitality was to lose 10 to 15 kilos, I don't know, 20 to 30 pounds, whatever, as quickly as possible. Now, I'm, I'm hoping this doesn't happen to any of us, okay? But I just want to illustrate a point. Imagine that you absolutely had to achieve that goal. You had to lose 10 to 15 kilos to protect your wealth, not your wealth, your health, no matter what. Just imagine that. And you were given two options. One is you could go and do a home study course. You could go buy a course, you know, and you could literally try and do the workouts at home in front of the TV. Or you could have a trainer turn up at 5 a.m. every morning to, you know, get you to, to do your workouts. Which one would you choose and which one would give you confidence of getting the results, of losing that 10 to 15 kilos quickly? Think about it. Just type it in the chat box. Which one would it be? The course or the trainer? I want to see if your brains are switched on. It's like Z, trainer, 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 trainer. Yeah, so I think you would all agree. Um, and I, I tend to agree with you as well. You know, it's definitely the trainer. It's, it's kind of common sense in terms of that process. So, you know, taking that little, you know, funny example, and now let's take that to your wealth, okay? And, you know, we, we hear, we, we've sat for four days now about building globally diversified passive income. Now, what about if I said to you, remember I started off on day one, people get their, their must and not their shoulds. They get their must and not their shoulds. What about if, you know, getting globally diversified passive income was a must for you, an absolute must, just like you had to lose 10 to 15 kilos. Would you just do a home study course or would you get the trainer? So, you know, for some investors, the super experienced, the sophisticated, the confident, and even those that are just motivated beyond belief, they don't need the trainer. They're just going to get the home study course and they're going to nail it. You know, the systems that we've built and the tools are just what the doctor ordered. You know, again, the formula to, to being able to invest is very simpler. You need the right information and the right partners. We've literally created both of those for you. We've got wealth going global. I'll talk about it a little bit later after Selwyn, but that's the right information. It's literally access to how to get the right information in terms of the countries, the currencies, the assets, the partners, how to build a plan over time, and ultimately how to use technology. And then the partners is the asset mastery. It's literally, we introduce you and teach you about 15 different asset classes, and we introduce you to the 15 top quality partners. You're going to meet Salwin now. Um, you, you've already met uh, with, with some of the partners already. Um, in terms of um, um, the, the London, i just gone and forgotten his bloody name, the London partner that we met um, on, on Tuesday. You're going to meet a couple more partners today and it's access. So again, right information, right partners, there they are, literally. Wealth going global, right information, uh, asset mastery, the right partners. So we've literally proven this for over two decades. What we used to do in the old days is you had to come on an airplane with me, we'd fly over to England, We'd literally go and sit in the office in London with Gary Sachs. You'd take us out to the property. You'd get the right information and you'd the right, meet the right partners. That's how we've done it for over 20 years. In, in, right in the beginning, I used to go to South Africa and I'd get the top developer, someone like Baldwin, Steve, 
Steve uh, um, and uh, Brooks, and I'd literally fly him over to London, and we would, you know, we would, um, we would introduce all the people to Steve Brooks. Would have all the models, and people would invest in the developments. I mean, my best ever was eighty six properties in one day. And um, so we've been doing this for two decades. But the best part is, is that we, you don't have to go to them now. We can bring them to you. And how do we do that? You know, because for most of you, there might be a better, more cost-effective option than getting on a prior airplane and flying over to London and flying to America and flying to Germany and flying to Australia. And that's us working directly with you. It's working with a coach on our team who can literally help you customize and install this wealth system into your portfolio. Imagine working one-to-one -one and having coaching all the way through at a lower cost option than most other options. People literally go, well, how's that possible? And it's actually quite simple. If you take anything, look at how technology has disrupted the taxi industry with Uber or the hotel industry with Airbnb or Blockbuster going out of business because of Netflix. It's exactly the same in terms of how to do it. So after 20 years in the space and going through several coaching programs, myself and hearing from thousands of other investors, we literally realized that this investment space was broken. Everyone was trying to do it on their own. They were going out, they're doing a course, they're reading a book, and that literally it was not working. So we fixed it. We literally fixed it. And that's why we created Wealth Going Global so that people literally had access to the right information. We created Asset Mastery so that people had access to the right partners. But according to Harvard, you've got a 400% better chance of getting results with a coach than doing it on your own. 400%. Again, let's go back to that health issue. I need to lose 10 to 15 kilos, otherwise I'm gonna have serious health complications. Am I gonna go on a home study course and try to do it all myself, or am I gonna get a coach? And you know, again, according to you know, Harvard, we've got a 400% better chance. So I've got a question for you. If you could get a coach to take you over the next four months, to literally help you go through Wealth Going Global, to go through um, Asset Mastery, to literally take you from A to B over four months, would that be something that you would like? You know, for me, all you need to do is type in there coach, basically, literally just type in the word coach. And if I, if I take it, if I, if I think about it, you know, where are we at the moment? We're at the end of October. We're fast approaching 2024. And, you know, you've got two months left in this year to finish this year strong. And how you finish this year is how you're going to start next year. And literally, your results next year are going to be determined by how you finish this year. So why we've done this, and, and literally my, my business partner, Alex, had this idea. He said, Scott, you've done the coaching. Uh, sorry, you've done the courses. You've done the, the Wealth Going Global. You've had phenomenal feedback from it. You've done the asset mastery. You're getting phenomenal feedback from people that are part of that. But what people need is they need someone to hold their hand and to hold them accountable and to take them through the process. And, you know, I, I did an executive coaching program. Um, it was really, really intense. you internationally certified. And Alex actually said to me, well, why don't we get some of those coaches to actually hold people that have been through the same experience I've been through to hold them to account over the next four months so that they can get results, hit the ground running and make 2024 a huge, huge success. So if that sounds exciting to you, just type in their coach. I'm now going to pivot to Selwyn because it's time to really start learning from an incredible partner. And I, after Selwyn, will come back and I will share with you more details around um, how you can do this in terms of that process. Selwyn, it's awesome to have you. Thanks so much for joining you, joining us. Thank sorry, um, it's it's wonderful to have you online. And uh, just before we we get started with you, I wanted to share with people a little glimpse into kind of uh, your you guys' background. So, firstly, in terms of Calio Private Equity, you know, I, I just love this the front of your website where it's literally communities are more powerful than networks. We're going to talk a lot about this today because you know I always say the number one way to manage risk is the right information and the right partners. And how do you do that? Well, it's about getting access to, to the right networks, basically. You know what I mean? And, and what you guys do is take it to the next level, which is community. And it's really what we're doing. I mean, on this thing, this diversification challenge is a community of people. At Calio Private Equity, we aim to build and grow community through our investment and advisory activities. We bring it together, like-minded individuals and companies that exchange resources and advance ideas, deepening the solidifying relationship of trust. And if I go to team, just to give a little bit of an introduction to, to, um, to Selwyn. So there's two partners, Glenn and Selwyn. So Selwyn has over 20 years of experience consulting and banking locally and abroad. He began his career at McKinsey & Co. in Johannesburg, undertaking projects across Africa. 
He subsequently co-founded and managed RMB's opportunity in real estate in the global real estate portfolio and later co-founded the RMB Westport Real Estate Development Fund, the largest sub-Saharan and real estate private equity fund at the time. Prior to joining Calio Private Equity, Selwyn led ABSA's commercial property finance business in Africa as a principal for the ABSA group. He currently serves on the board of trustees of the African Leadership Academy. And if you don't see it here, he has a PhD, which is a doctorate in mathematics from Cambridge University, uh, which is pretty, pretty impressive. <laughs> so without Thank further ado, Selwyn. You sound a little bit like my mom, but uh, I appreciate that. Well, you know, Someone has, to, someone has to tell people you came from Cambridge. You know, when, we, when we're talking about risk and due diligence, I want people to at least kind of have a bit of a, a, a sense of who they're talking to, if that makes sense, you know, in terms of... So, so well, let's, uh, let's, let's get started. And um, before we go any further, just tell us, I mean, I've, I've, I've read your, your bio. No one ever likes to, to brag, so I, I do it for you. But tell us just a little bit about your journey. I mean, really, you can see you've got a very extensive journey and... In, in property, in real estate, in, in funds, in private equity, et cetera. Just talk a little bit about it. How did you get into it? And, you know, um, just so people have an idea of who's in the room. So, so Scott, I mean, you've, you've, read, you've, you've read out my bio. I started as an academic and realized that that wasn't really an expression of myself. I didn't want to be in research and I didn't want to be stuck in an institution. Um, and the best way for me to get diverse experience in commerce was through consulting. And when I joined McKinsey in Johannesburg, it was the fastest growing office in the world, McKinsey's fastest growing office in the world. And we had very diverse um, clients and uh, very diverse projects in operations, strategy, um, organization, capital planning, and so on. Um, after being there for, for a few years, McKinsey has gone through phases, as people on, on this call would know. Um, I joined RMB, and and that that was actually life def defining for me. Joining RMB, my current partner, uh, Glenn Scorgi, um, was one of the first people that I worked with when I when I joined RMB. And in your your point earlier, I, I, I'm actually glad I joined a little early and was able to listen to to what you I'll said. Just, I'll, I'll just say here, yeah, just so people could see, this is Glenn, um, who who someone's referring to. So, yeah. Uh, so Glenn and I started to work together. In 2004, I think it was when we first uh, we, we first traveled together. We were looking for opportunities. We had a relatively open mandate. The banking world was very different in those days, much less regulated and constrained than it became after the global financial crisis. And what I loved about the banking world is something that I've retained in private equity, and that I think speaks to your audience, Scott. It speaks to the people who are here, and that is the sense that your risk is the risk. That, that, that you see. Consulting is always one degree removed. You're telling people what to do, you're giving advice, and then you walk away. You leave your PowerPoint presentation on the desk and you, 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 get, back into your, you get back into your fancy car and drive away, and then go to the next client. With, um, and particularly the R&B culture as it was in those days, you're very well aligned with uh, the bank as your principal investor. And, and Glenn and I ran a principal investing business. And then later on went into funds and into property and into, into various other areas inside the bank, but always having that particular philosophy. So um, I think the, 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 um, the journey for me is having found that world where you're very well aligned with the people that you work with, with the people who supply you with resources, with capital in particular. I always wanted to stay in that. Um, and obviously, I moved in banking and um, developed an expertise in, in property, but I've always liked the idea of being a generalist. And uh, Glenn had developed a relationship with Garth, who you mentioned in your presentation as well, Scott. Um, they, had, they were kind of social friends, and, they, um, and, and Garth wanted to build the capability in Calio for Calio to do private equity in, in, a, in a, I think, a different way. Just, to, just to, uh, to dwell on that for a moment, private equity investments are often presented as investments into funds. And the traditional private equity managers, the famous private equity managers that are out there, Apollo, Cerberus, Blackstone, and so on, those, those managers manage giant funds. Yeah. Glenn and I had both been investors in funds on behalf of RMB and had managed funds on behalf of RMB. And we didn't feel that that fully captured the idea of... Um, alignment that we wanted with our investors. 
the idea of a fund. And uh, what we do in, in Calio Private Equity is direct private equity. That's our core business, it's direct private equity, which is individual transactions or individual investments matched to groups of investors for that investment. So for example, investors who don't like a particular sector or who want to be more offshore or whatever it is, we can, we can offer them investments that make more sense for their portfolio or for their levels of interest. The other thing that we, that we realized would be very powerful is what you mentioned, Scott, which is the community side. Calio has a family office and a wealth management business. It has clients who, many of whom have been in business or are in business and have networks and uh, links of their own. We don't really like the idea of networking in the sense of, you know, attending cocktail parties and, and doing that kind of thing. Way, just by the way, that's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard where you walk around and hand out your business yeah, card. Yeah, you hand out your business card. It's and, literally uh, like poor man thinking. Like, it doesn't work. Like, it like, no, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work. It doesn't, <laughs> and, so so, the, so the, de the, 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 deepest, the deepest due diligence that you can do on your partner is just knowing them and or knowing somebody who's been in business with them and seen them operate under different kinds of circumstances and somebody who can vouch for their integrity. So many of the people that, that, that we invest in are people that are part of the broader Calio community or our own personal networks in the sense of, we know people who've worked with them or we know people who've invested with them. And many of our opportunities come through that kind of, kind of, that kind of channel. And I think that's very, I think that's very oh, powerful. By the way, so sorry for butting in. I know people hate me doing it, but I'm just trying to give context to people. Remember what, it, to everyone who's listening, remember what I just said literally half an hour ago. What he's talking about is you test people's character, not when it's working, it's when it's not working. And that's the yeah. power of knowing a relationship because everyone tells you about all their wins, but they often don't tell you about their losses. <laughs> yes. So, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to, I mean, for me, the best example is actually my own business, Calio Private Equity. So why is it that after working with Glenn in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, we went our separate ways just because of the way things evolved in RMB and the property businesses and so on. And then we joined together. Glenn and I lived through the global financial crisis together. And we, we were very, very heavily exposed in our portfolio to that. We managed a portfolio of over, with assets of over a quarter of a billion dollars, but it was exposed to the property uh, to the property sector. So it was the most heavily hit um, sector during that global financial crisis. But I could see how Glenn worked. I could see how I worked under those circumstances. And you can build a rapport and you can, you, you, you can now build that level of trust, which is so fundamental. And if I look at the investee CEOs that we work with, I, you know, not all of them have the same level of capability or the, uh, to be completely by the same level of integrity or alignment with us. But the, the point is that we try to find people who will have that alignment. And in, in situations where they're facing adversity, we'll do the right thing. And at least we'll think through the process with us aligned with them. So to give you an example, and I, I think Scott in, in various other presentations, I think um, Glenn might have presented to a different audience, but Austin Business Finance, which trades as backed in, in Texas, Glenn and I were visiting the, the, that, that business last week. The uh, CEO through COVID period said he would never stop paying interest to our investors. So we, we actually offered to him and said, we, we are, we're pretty sure your business needs, needs liquidity in a time like this. So we're happy to approach our investors and say, you're not gonna be getting your interest payments we felt that that might be the right thing for the business. And he said, no, he didn't want to do that. He felt the correct thing was to maintain a 100% track record with us and with our investors, even if that meant take, making a personal sacrifice on his side. And he was able to trade through and uh, the business has grown and actually grew through the COVID period. Other competitors went out of business, had to be resuscitated or bailed out, but, he was able to he was able to do this and and i think he i think he took a risk but the point was that he wanted to ensure or that he was aligned and that he communicated to us that he had that alignment with us so i i i think you know scott your your various comments very pertinent um in our deal making um we also don't, we we try not to be the majority 
We want yeah. to make sure that management and the people who are going to be required to deliver on the investment. Sorry, I'm, I'm being rude, but I just I'm just coming back to this, like what yeah. I call old school mentality, new school mentality. Because yeah. old school is, and by the way, Glenn did an incredible presentation last week to our mastermind was about private equity, and I'll show you some of the slides. Again, people have access to get asset mastery should they want. But the point being is that the old school way of doing it in business or in property was to go and buy the whole thing, okay? And the first time I ever learned about this, ladies and gentlemen, was actually my father. So my father was the financial director of Rainbow Chickens. And he said that Rembrandt, that's one of the most uh, wealthy families in the world, came in and bought 40% of the company. And now the old school mindset is, no, but I must own more than 50%. I must be in control of the company. And, and then a couple of years later, my friend works in England for a company called Strand. And um, they're a, a private equity firm, funny enough, as well. And they got bought out by a big family. And this, this family, the Hanson family, bought them for 40%. I thought, shit, there's a pattern there. The wealthiest families in the world are buying 40%. Why are they not buying 51%? Because we're all taught to go buy the whole thing and we must control it and whatever. And the point being is that that's an old school way of doing it because if you control it, you have to manage it. And, and then, interestingly enough, literally last week, Glenn said, no, we're into conscious capital and we'd much rather the founders and the owners of the team and you know whatever have the majority because then they're going to get out of bed every morning and worry about it and getting it done versus you getting out of bed every morning and worrying about it. So I'm like, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping in Solomon, but I'm just trying yeah. to get context to my little picture that I drew here. No, and basically where you're going, you know? Yeah, that's, that, that's exactly it. And then the other, the other component is often um, leaving space for other key employees. So yes, the founder, manager, it's, it's often also other people who are needed to be aligned and who need to have the same kind of orientation. So we're, we're, we're very keen like in, in our contracting. We're very keen being in the remuner, on the remuneration committees of the companies that we invest in, both to avoid the conflict that you have with the CEO founders, um, but also to manage that next level to say, who else is important here? Are they correctly incentivized? Are they locked in? Is there, is there the correct protection for the company and the correct alignment for that employee? So to try to understand how value is being delivered and knowing that as an investor, you are bringing a particular kind of value. You're bringing risk capital, but you're not bringing operational capabilities. You're not bringing market knowledge or anything like that necessarily directly. You sometimes can help. And I think we do help our investees. Um, and we often intervene when they want us to intervene. And they'll say, can you help us with this? Can you talk to the bank for us? Can you sit on this call? We've got this issue with one of the other shareholders. Can you help us? I, you know, we're always available to our investees to do those kinds of things and to invest in CEOs and founders. But we are quite uh, we're fully aware we're not able to do what a CEO does day in and day out. We're not able to do what a management team does day in and day out. And we're deliberately, we, you know, if we could run, you know, one of our investees, we would <laughs> rather than do our current job. But we actually believe that the, that our founders should be the best at running their own businesses, both because they should be fully aligned, but also they should be developing their knowledge as they go, as they as they operate, and they should have entered with a particular understanding of their business, which you know obviously we test. Yeah. So, yeah, to go back to your original question about personal journey, I think for um, somebody like me who feels that they're a generalist, wants to be involved in quite a few things, likes the interactions, which are, I think, meaningful interactions with, um, with partners. This is, a very, this is a very good job that I have. And I'm able, to, I'm able to speak to CEOs about something that's very fundamental to them. In many cases, I'm able to help them. And our role in their lives is actually quite fundamental. And we, we, we do have investees who are very thankful for the way we've approached things. And, in, and, and we've actually had people seek us out saying, I know I can get the money somewhere else. I could probably get a better deal somewhere else, but I'd actually rather have somebody who wants to relate to me when things are not going well, will understand that or help me intervene in a positive sense. So that, that is the con that's the conscious capital side in terms of the, not just in terms of the final end goal investment, but also in terms of how we operate those investments and how we make those investments at uh, on day one. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go. I want to share my screen here quickly. And 
we're not going to regurgitate everything that uh, Glenn went through. Um, so Glenn, Glenn did this session for our mastermind. And like I said to you, every month we go deep into one asset class. And Glenn, actually funny enough, literally this month of October, uh, did the private equity one. So again, this is you can get this as, as part of asset uh, asset mastery. But what I what I just wanted to talk about a little bit was just the asset class of private equity because some people confuse it in terms of what is it, etc. And in simple terms, you know, it sometimes gets confused. But private equity is where you invest in a company, but it's it's a non listed company, so it's a private company, and it can also be a property deal. Like we're going to talk through some some real opportunities now, so people can get a sense of it. Um, so, but but just from your perspective, Solon, how would you sum up private equity? Yeah, I think you've already summed it up. So it, it, it's it's a, it's a massive asset class. Um, normally, when they show private equity or the size of private equity, they're only talking about those things that show up in formal funds. But if you think about it, every, almost every business, any business that is not listed, is a private equity business in the sense of operating outside the public outside the, the public listed markets. So it's it's a very wide, it's, it's a very wide range of potential investees. Um, and it, it's uh, our area in private equity is a little bit above venture capital, uh, but certainly below what we would normally classify as buyouts or mergers and acquisitions. We invest in what we call growth. So it's, the supply of capital to businesses that want to grow and for whom the best form of capital is equity capital and long-term permanent capital in some other form, potentially permanent debt even. Um, so that's that's how I would classify our version of, of private equity. Brilliant. Um, and I think, again, not, I'm not going to go through all these slides, but um, you know, if, if going through this whole presentation, there was like, what are the different returns? How do you balance risk and return? It was talking about private equity in 2022 and where the opportunities were. It was talking about the Calio private equity team and, and taking into extent more around what Selwyn has already spoken about and, and what differentiates them. But what I wanted to do was actually to pivot. And, um, and I want to start talking about um, some, some, you know, using a deal as an example to kind yes. of talk about kind of risk and partners, because I kind of want to get in. So as an example, this is a this is an opportunity that that is literally becoming available as as we speak. It's one of the ones that you've uh, done a lot of due diligence on. But but let's not use this as an example as a case study for kind of the type of you know uh, thinking that you would go through in terms of risk and due diligence. So let's just say now I want to be an American property. I personally have been wanting to be in it since 2010. I've been wanting to get into Manhattan for my whole time, it, and I've never once been able to invest in New York, let alone Manhattan, you know, because it just it just never found a way to be able to do it, never found a partner on the ground. And so talk us through, Solon, the process you and Glenn go through in, in, in you know, ascertaining a market, you know, finding the partner, doing the DD on a deal and, and determining, yep, this one's good for our investors. So uh, this, this, is, this is actually a fantastic example, Scott. So one of the sponsors of the, the underlying transaction for this Catherine Street tra uh, transaction in Manhattan is somebody called Duncan Randall. Duncan and I have known each other. We were for over 20 years. We were together in McKinsey and we served on the same team and landed up living in the same house for several months serving a particular client. Duncan is married to an American. He's lived in America for several years now and he's built a property business using his own money and money from other investors. He had previously been a private equity operator in South Africa. He was one of the founders of Tana Africa, which is uh, funded by the Oppenheimer family and um, a, a sovereign wealth fund from Singapore. So here is somebody that we know very well. Duncan knows that we have an investor base that is interested in these kinds of assets. He has shown me personally transactions before I joined Calio Capital. I invested with him myself. So I have a sense of how he's operated. I know how he's operated through typical times like the COVID period and how he's been able to manage assets. Um, he actually approached us and said, this is what's going to come available. I want to structure a deal which will allow your investors to invest into uh, this debt there are other people in his in 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 his network that he's offering this to. 
and um, so we had um, so so we had a you know a chance to review his due diligence, look at the documentation ourselves, um, ask various questions, understand the market studies, and so on. But the starting point was this was sort this was not something we sought out. We did not go into we did not do a web search and say, well, deals available in Manhattan. So many questions. Do that, just quickly, sorry, if you do that, like you're buying the crap no one else in America wants. <laughs> By the time it's on the web, no one exactly. else wants. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is this is very much a private deal based on relationships that we have and that other people would simply not have access to. So I, I think. Yeah, you know, this this is one of those examples. Every single one of the deals that we that we have was sourced or has been sourced through somebody coming to us and saying, "Do you want to participate? Does this interest you? Is this something that your investor base is likely to to go for?" And then we can interrogate it and say yes or no. In this case, what was brought to us was a, a very much established transaction. Uh, a lot of the initial property work had been done, had been done to a very high standard. Duncan himself works with, with a team that has a lot of experience in this particular kind of property redevelopment, historic buildings in Manhattan that are being redeveloped. There's a system um, where you get historic credits, which allow you to, to benefit, to effectively do, the, to, to do your developments at a cheaper rate because you're getting these tax credits. And, um, so a lot of the work had already been done. It was a question of reviewing that and understanding that and getting a sense of the risk return. We already had a strong sense of the sponsor and uh, the way that they would approach this. So yes, yeah, so this, this, this particular transaction, what, what's been offered is senior debt uh, secured by a, a long-term lease on a property that was formerly owned by the Catholic Church. It's in the process of being transferred from the Catholic Church to the development company and uh, the funding is senior funding, as I said, it's secured funding, it's 1% a month payable quarterly, so very good return. Um, and um, it's, it's um, uh, we, we, we've, again, to Scott's principles, we've, we've said we will only take a, a relatively small portion of it. We're, we're probably gonna take uh, somewhere between 15 and 20% of the total debt that's available so that other people can put their money in. There's a big group of investors, many of whom have invested before with Duncan and with the spot with the other sponsors in his team. And uh, so that, off that, that offers us a sense of comfort. Other people are reviewing the documentation. Other people have experience on this. And there's, there's, there's I think, strong alignment with, with, the, with the total investment team. A couple, of, a couple of things that I think of first you're saying. So firstly, there's power of community. Okay, so like, it's not like me trying to do it all on my own. Like, oh my God, I'm going to do all my own due diligence, whatever. It's like, there's a whole group of us, you know, like looking at it and whatever and um, doing it. The second thing is that from a risk perspective, you're effectively taking out the bank. Like you're almost taking the position of the bank because you're putting the first mortgage debt down. So you're behaving like a bank. You're putting the money down. You've got first mortgage debt over the property. So should stuff go wrong, the property's there. It's exactly like when a bank lends you money against your house. And, and, and for the bank interest rate, you're getting paid 1% a month, paid quarterly, which basically means you're getting 12% a year in US dollars. Now, yes. please tell me, and again, I've been doing this 28 years, 28, 12% uh, in Manhattan, New York, okay, for a 12-month project, it can be extended to 18 months, but it's still a short-term project, 12 to 18 yes. months. If it gets extended 18 months, by the way, you still get paid your 1% per month. So you, you're just you're still getting 12% a year. I mean, that, that is a really, really good return. Now, you're not getting the capital growth. Remember, you're not playing in this part anymore, but that because you're taking away the risk. So, so this is an income producing deal only, but it's a 12% in, in Manhattan, New York. And you basically have it secured against the property with a partner that's got extensive experience, da, 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 da. So I just want to kind of give people a context of, of what we're talking. These are real life examples now. Like I didn't want to, someone phoned me yesterday and we had a chat and we were like, you know, we can talk about private equity until the cars come home, or we can talk about actual deals. Like, because then it's like literally people can learn from actual deals, you know? So that was the one. Now <clears throat> we're talking diversification. And so I tell you what, one was getting a little time machine and, and, a, and an airplane all at the same time. And we're just going to fly across the world, straight over to another continent, another currency, another partner, 
another asset class, by the way, because because that one is effectively a debt deal. Yes, it's in property, but it's a debt deal in property. And now we're going to fly across the world to Germany, which, by the way, is the number one economy in Europe. And we're going to look at a euro deal. Um, and, and it's actually an equity deal in terms of that process. So if I if I come here, so and let's do the same process now with this deal, um, because I, I'm trying to give people a concept of from the comfort of their couch, they can get access to partners, they can get access to information, they can invest, um, and they don't have to get on an airplane. <laughs> yes, they don't have to get on an airplane, and they don't have to visit small towns in Germany. So just, just to give some context on Germany and, and, and why the opportunity is a genuine diversifier, Scott, because... You know, United States Manhattan, that is the center of the universe, at least according to New Yorkers that, you know, and, and a lot of people that would be the center of the universe. In Germany, a big chunk of the economy is run out of towns that you and I are unlikely to visit or, or be able to find on the map necessarily without some kind of help. Um, so, I mean, the examples are Volkswagen space in a town called Wolfsburg. Um, this particular town, Wuppertal, is home to a couple of industrial brands like Vorwerk and suppliers into the into the motor industry. It's not far from Dusseldorf, but it is a secondary town, but with a very strong industrial base. So just to give a sense, this kind of opportunity is fundamentally different and is a genuine diversifier. And uh, in Calia, we this would be the third deal that we've done with the same sponsor. The sponsor, interestingly, was also introduced indirectly um, to me through people that I knew, and um, several people that I know had invested with him previously and uh, very successfully. It's managed by somebody called Peter Katz. Peter used to run the Redefine portfolio in Europe. And he um, then went on his own and uses private money and has a very similar mindset to us, which is quite important. He also raises um, funding, does a kind of equ an, an equity raise for each individual investment. And does it? He wants to do it through people that he that that he trusts and that, that he knows. So as I said, we've done this is the third one we've done through Calio. But before that, I had actually been exposed to several of his other other transactions. Um, and and again, I'm used to his um, his due diligence process. It's very rigorous. It involves technical elements, engineering studies of the buildings, for example, studies of existing leasing documentation. Uh, tax structuring and so on. Those are extremely important in this kind of transaction. What's been offered here, though, and, and again, to Scott's point, is actually equity. So it is an equity exposure. Um, it does have a reasonable yield. We expect a, a kind of mid to high single digit yield initially. Um, uh, it has in place debt, which is important. It has debt that was entered into and that will be assumed on transfer of the property. Uh, when interest rates were still low and that were fixed at that time. So there's a massive benefit in that. But just, on then, that just on that, sorry, Soren. Um, so what's really important here, people always say to me, oh, but Scott, um, you know, if I buy a house, I'm getting a mortgage, so I'm getting leverage, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And what, what you're saying is so important because you are still getting leverage. The only difference is even if you got $100 million and you fly to Germany right now, the chances of you getting debt are zero, zero. Zero. Because you've got no relationships. And if you do get debt, you're going to get very expensive debt compared to partnering with a local person that's got a track record, got experience, has the debt in place. And like you said, has fixed it prior to the interest rates rising. So it sounds too good to be true. And it is if you're trying to do it on your own, unless you've got partners. Yes. So this, these deals that we and, and this is these 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 deals that we're talking about, Scott, are a little bit different from the deals that we normally do as a, as a pure private equity house. Anyone who visits our website will see deals that we've done directly. These deals are deals that have been brought to us by people who are part of our community um, and people that we've invested in personally or who are people that have been invested in by like friends of ours and other members of, of the Calio community. And so these are a little bit different, but these are not possible to do for, from where we're sitting. And we have to rely on the individual on, on the individual partners and the networks that they've built. The um, so, for example, Peter has a whole team of people who do due diligence for him in Germany. He has a, a legal team that has worked with him on, on multiple transactions. He has a administrative team that is is able to manage the investment structure for him. And those are things that if you and I were trying to build those from scratch or trying to do on our own, we simply would not be able to do. 
uh, without years of work and without having been in the market previously. And the, the benefit of, of somebody like Peter is he built up his infrastructure while working for Redefine and building their European portfolio years back. And then going on his own, he decided to focus on particular asset classes. He did a study. He said there's certain kinds of assets that seem to do well through the markets, health assets, diversified assets, basic necessities, properties that deal with basic necessities. And then the German market in particular has certain resilient features to it, including the availability of debt from multiple funders. Again, but Scott's point stands. It's, it's, not, it's not possible for us to arrive there, drive out to Wuppertal and to start doing deals. These deals come along quite rarely. Um, this is the first deal we've seen for over a year from, from Peter. Just hasn't felt that the other deals that he's seen are good enough for his investment, for, 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 for his investors. So that's, uh, that's I mean, a simple perspective. To put in perspective, Sowen, you know, the last deal you guys did with Peter, and you've done three, um, so there's track yeah. record, you've already said. But I remember there was a deal as COVID was happening, and one of your investors yeah. got spooked. And there was a gap for 700,000 euros. And I was like, pick me, pick me. I want to be in it. <laughs> and, uh, and we tried to go to our best place. And like, we just couldn't move quick enough. Like, you know, because because these things move quickly when it's a good deal. And um, again, it, I remember it being a DIY store. Like, yes. big, anyway, and the long story short was, it was a great income return. It had good capital growth. And you guys exited that in, you know, 18 months or something. Yes. And got a 1.8 1, multiple, which basically means if you put $100 in, you got $180 back which is like really good in less than two years. And it's, you know, again, like it was for me, it was so frustrating. It was like, I was like, I want to be in the deal, but we, we just couldn't act fast enough, you know? And um, one of the reasons we created the mastermind was that sometimes through the Wild Migrate platform, you know, it takes too long to get stuff set up and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes with the mastermind, it's like, guys, it's a good deal. You know, we need to move quickly. Are you in, are you out? And then sometimes that's how private equity works. You know, it's, you've, got to, you've got to be able to, 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 you know, act fairly quickly. So when this deal came along and you were like, same operator, same person, I was like, if you don't let us get in this deal, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, it's going to be war. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, so, so really, really appreciate it. Peter, let, uh, so let's go to the last one. So again, let's go back in our time machine yes. now, back in our airplane. And we're going to fly right across the world, back to Austin, Texas. And um, again, we're going to go into a different asset class now. It, it's still under the umbrella of private equity, but now you're actually investing in company in a company and um and peter's i keep saying peter now because you put peter in my head someone's already <laughs> mentioned this company uh backed um just tell us a little bit about this because i mean these are literally yeah. three opportunities that we're looking to go live with you on you know in the near future yeah so 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 scott i want to stick with, with with the theme that you raised the partnership theme so um backed is the trading name of a company called awesome business finance awesome business finance is founded by a south african uh, called Zahn Maiberg. Zahn is also founder of Cashflow Capital, which is a business here in South Africa and is a working capital lender, mostly to restaurants, franchisees, and so on. And he moved to America and um, we, as in Calio, started financing him pretty much from the beginning, just feeling that he had a good concept, he was a good operator, and um, he had a, had a model for dealing with, a, a kind of risk-managed model for introducing himself into the US market. So we've been invested since 2019. Um, and we invested in equity and, and permanent debt. And now that's all been taken up. But the business is a lending business. It, it does what are called, called motion cash advances and lines of credit to uh, medium size and small corporates in America. That is a massive market. The United States is obviously a very dynamic economy. There are hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of businesses that actually fall into the, into scope for um, for for backed, and um, it's mostly working capital lending, lending of less than eighteen months, and and relatively high interest rates because it's generally lightly secured or unsecured lending. And what's important is that over the years we've been able to monitor the credit performance. And we've been able to monitor the management performance. And uh, Glenn and I were there last week, and we sat with the management team. We were able to to see his Zahn has built a business which now has fifty six employees, 
46 based in Austin, 10 based in, um, in California. Um, he sources deals through brokers and through a direct team. Um, he's got a refined technology system for reviewing deals, assessing the credit risk, and uh, a very small percentage of deals that are referred ever get funded. Um, but there's massive scope in a business like this. Uh, Back was actually rated uh, one of the by Inc. It was uh, it was rated as one of the the top thousand fastest growing businesses in the United States, ranked in the top two hundred uh, last year. So it's it's viewed and seen as a successful high growth business. What's being offered is debt again at ten percent per annum. It's a very different profile, very diversified. That's U.S. dollar debt. Um, and uh, that that's money that goes into the business as subordinated debt and then is used to finance the operations of the business, mostly lending, mostly directly going into, into building the book of awesome business finance. Awesome. There is a senior lender. There is a senior lender. And, and this, this helps us as well because it's not just our due diligence. It's Fortress, one of the world's biggest lenders, is the senior lender to awesome business finance. And they have a line of... $50 million expandable to $100 million. So, Amazing. and you also, you, you know, you guys put your money where your mouth is. You know, as I understand yes. it, between debt and your equity, you've got $20 million. In yes, the, in $20 million the we have exposure to it. Okay. So, um, and and I'm I'm personally invested. Well, personally, it's actually my wife who's personally invested in the in this business. In this business. Glenn is personally invested in this business. Uh, so uh, it's 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 yeah, we, we definitely put our money where our mouth is. Um, just generally, but with with this opportunity in particular, it's it's our it's been a very it's, it's been a very good investment for us. We've been able to see it grow from initiation, and we built a very strong rapport with the management team. Um, obviously, like any other business, it has its challenges and it has its risks and so on. But uh, we've you know the the risk return profile I think is massively compelling for a debt instrument. Uh, you know, to get ten percent per annum. And to have an investment term of three years, um, given where interest rates are likely to go, I think that is a, that that's. I just think that's very compelling. Yep, no, completely. Just one thing we forgot to mention. Yeah, this um, this building in Germany is so. Just to remind everyone, this one is a twelve percent US dollar income return per year. This one is a six six to six and a half percent euro income return. Again, paid uh, quarterly. Um, with a total return, including capital growth, of somewhere between 13 and 15% um, in terms of that process. And then this is a debt deal at 10% in US dollars. So you've got euros, you've got dollars, you've got debt, you've got equity, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of, of different types. So, and as always, it's a pleasure to, uh, to chat. I love what you've done today, just with everyone and sharing with everyone. I'd love anyone to give comments um, in the chat box as to what you thought. What we've done very consciously today is we've taken away a lot of the theory and we've talked talk practical about actual partners and actual deals so that people can understand it. Because again, I can waffle about the theory till the cars come home. I've got an entire course on it, Wealth Going Global and Asset Mastery. You can go and do all of the research. But there's, in my opinion, there's nothing more powerful than learning while doing. And what you've helped us do today very consciously is go through three deals and hopefully for everyone, literally learn while doing. And even if you're watching the recording and these deals are gone, because they will be gone, they're going in the next, one of them is closing in a month, the other one in a month, in two months. The point is, you will be might be watching the recording, but it still gives you a concept of the, when deals come, how they work, particularly when we work with Kalia. Scott, thank you so much. I love the opportunity to speak about my business. I love the opportunity to speak about my, my deals. And I'm also glad that I joined early to see what you said about partnerships, because that's so fundamental to the way we operate as well. Yeah, no, well, look, it's, uh, I, I fundamentally believe it's the collaboration and partnerships is the, is the currency of the 21st century. And it's, that is built on trust. And, and the reason I say that is that let's say that the currency of the 21st century is trust. But how do you achieve trust? Well, it's collaboration and partnerships. It's, it's, the only way, it's the only way to do it. If you try to do it all yourself, it's literally the old school way of doing it. And, and then you're going to be stuck probably in your country, in your asset class, in your town, in your currency, and because it, it, it's virtually impossible to go internationally without collaboration and partnerships and to truly diversify. So there's lots of brilliant comments coming through, Salwan. 
Uh, thank you so thank much you. for your time. Thanks, and uh, yeah, uh, have an awesome day, dude. Bye. Thanks, everyone. So thank you for all the wonderful comments coming through. And like I said to you, can you start to see now when we talk about risk and partnerships, uh, the power in what we've just discussed? Because again, we can be going and doing it all on our own, or we can be out there with a team of people that have been doing this for 20 years plus, have the degrees from Cambridge, the blah, 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 you know, but more importantly, and, and most importantly, have the networks and the partnerships um, in place in terms of what is what is happening. Um, we'll come back to talking about investments and stuff, and I'll talk about that um, tomorrow in terms of, you know, where we're at. And, and, you know, again, on the assumption we can get it on the Wealth Migrate platform, um, the idea is to make it affordable for people to be able to participate. So I am super excited. I'm going to bring you now to our next partner, Judd Dunning. Now, he's in America. He's in California. And I literally had to interview him last night because it would have been like 1 a.m. in the morning for him in America. And... Um, and uh, he's just, he's closed a billion dollars in the last three years. He's got over 20 years. He's an incredible speaker. He's got so many pearls of wisdom to be able to drop. But I'm also conscious of the fact that we've been through a lot of information right now. And, you know, I want to remind you of the saying, and I'm sure many, many, many of you have heard of the saying before by Einstein. The definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Does that make sense? So if you wake up every, every year on the 1st of January and you go, this year is going to be different. This year I'm going to internationalize. This year I'm going to diversify. This year I'm going to start building a passive income. And if every year you get to Christmas and you go, damn it, man, it didn't happen. And if you think 2024 is going to be different, then you might be playing with the definition of insanity. And if you agree with me, just type in there, agree. Yes or no. I'm just interested. I'm interested because I, I do this. I'm like, I'm going to take over the world. And I get to the end of the year and I'm like, I didn't take over the world. It's like, what am I going to do differently? And then I don't do anything differently. I get to the same at the end of the next year. It's like, oh, I still didn't take over the world. And again, it was in 2010 when I had this epiphany moment where I was like, I don't have to do it all myself. I can do it through partnership. And today's all about risk. Okay. And, and hopefully overwhelmingly, you're starting to get the feeling that risk is about two things. It's about having the right information and about the right partners in terms of where we're at. So thank you for all the agree. So I want to just share with you a quick gift and I want to ask you a question. You know, one of the things that when we talk the investment game, a lot of people get overwhelmed. And I love these type of pictures where like you're hearing all this information, you're hearing all the lingo and you're hearing from Cambridge doctorates and you're hearing from, you know, um, uh, on developers in, in London and you're hearing from financial people in family offices and you know, it's like, whoa, so, you know, Ann Wilson with the ETFs is like, whoa, 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 so much information. Like, what do I do next? And by the way, a confused mind does nothing. A confused mind does nothing. So can I ask you a question? Could you just give me literally 10 or 15 minutes and I'll help you like literally unlock that confusion. Like I'll literally say like, right, here's a way to do it. Like this is, I've been doing this 28 years. I've read all the books. I've been on all the courses. I've met all the partners. I've flown all over the world. I've made tens of you know, millions of dollars of probably mistakes. I've made hundreds of millions of dollars of investments and facilitated $1.3 billion in investing. Could I literally just take all of that and, and, and help you in the next 10 to 15 minutes? Literally say, there's a key. Do you want the key? Yes or no? Um, could you just, just tell me if, if I can, please? So thank you for, for those that are giving me permission. If you don't want it, it's fine. I'll, I'll just go off. I'll go find someone and we'll keep doing the deals on our own. <laughs> so I reminded you, and I love this little analogy. You know, we, we, I asked that question just before Solomon joined. And I said, if I had an extremely direct question and your doctor said you had a serious medical condition and you literally had to lose 10 to 15 kilos quickly. And I said to you, you had two options. You literally could go and buy a home study course or you could get the trainer. And I think we all agreed that you would get the trainer. I mean, I certainly would. Like, if this, if my life depended on it, like, I would not just go and get a home study course. I'd literally get the trainer. And that's the difference between a must and a should. So, I don't know if you know, but it's our birthday. Can you believe it? That literally Wealth Migrate 10 years ago in October went live. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've been helping people invest around the world in different continents, different asset classes, different partners, different currencies, and over time for the last 10 years. And on top of that, with the Wealth University, it's a one-year anniversary with regards to the mastermind. So we've literally been running the mastermind now for a year. So literally, it's our birthday. 
And so on the back of our birthday, <coughs> we wanted to share something with you. Now, I've got a business partner of mine, Alex. I've worked with Alex for, uh, well, I've known him for 10 years, but I've worked with him since 2019. And he came up with this brilliant concept. And literally, we were talking about it last week. He came up with it over the weekend. And this is the speed of implementation. So I went and Googled like what he said, we need to, we need to have a pathfinder. So I went and Googled and I said, what is a pathfinder? And according to the Britannica you know, dictionary, it's a person who goes ahead of a group and finds the best way to travel through an unknown area. It's a personal group that is the first to do something that makes it possible for others to do the same thing. And so I thought, wow, like what an incredible word, Alex, you know, because that's really what, you know, whether it was IPS when I was helping people buy houses back in South Africa or England or Australia or America, and then getting into commercial property and now, you know, overall diversification between us as a group, that's exactly what, you know, we've done in, in terms of pathfinding. And for me, it's about globally diversified passive income. It's literally about that because that will provide you with your wealth protection, a plan B, peace of mind, you know, and, and ultimately the freedom of choice that, that everyone is looking for in terms of where you're looking at. So it's our birthday and I literally wanted to share with you an idea which Alex came up with and we're calling it our wealth pathfinder. Now I remind you that according to Harvard, you'll be 400% better off, 400% better chance of getting a result if you actually had your own coach. And I know a lot of you wrote in there, coach, 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 coach. So just imagine if you could have a personal one-to-one -one coach twice a month for the next four months, November, December, January, February. The next four months, you meet with them every two weeks, eight weeks in a row, and literally you finish this year strong, you make sure everything's set up right, you hit the ground running next year, and they hold you to account. They, they, they take you on a plan. You go through wealth going global. You go through at least you know make steady progress in terms of asset mastery. You you, you know literally it's someone holding you and being accountable. And so what we're going to offer literally as part of the wealth pathfinder is a coach. And you're literally going to have your own personal coach one one. Um, it's four months and it's going to be an accountability coach. Now the value of that is is sixteen hundred dollars. I mean that's that's what coaching uh, costs in terms of it. Um, and, and to be honest, I've paid a hell of a lot more. I've, I've paid $1,600 plus just for a session. The total value, $1,600. The next thing is you're going to get Wealth Going Global. So this is the course that we built. It's literally a, a, a home study course. And the first module is about the countries. How to get 100% clear on the countries you wish to invest in and avoid the mistakes that 80% of people make. It's about choosing your top five countries. Then it's about the currencies. And this is where we partner with James Painter. And it's all about the currency conundrum. How do you manage global risk? How do you diversify your portfolio and make sure that you're in multiple currencies in terms of that process? It's about choosing your top five currencies. It's about assets. You know, you've learned about a whole bunch of different assets. You've met a couple of our partners. It's about what are those top 15 assets? How do you go into those top 15 assets? And, and more importantly, what are the opportunities and what are the risks? Then it's about the partners. You've probably learned today more than ever, you know, it's all about the partners. How do you find the right partners? And I showed you today the substance that is sitting there behind the partners. And then it's about time. You know, it's about building out a plan. And, and if I go back and I show you here, and I'll just go back to, to the sheet here, you know, literally it's all here. So it's a home study course. You literally go into the countries and you can go through the countries. And if I click on it, you've got the lesson. And you've got the materials. So all the different links and everything is here. If you do the currencies, exactly the same. If you do the assets, the same. You go to the partners, like I showed you today. Um, the lesson is there and all the materials are there in terms of it. Um, and the best part is you bring it all together at the end under time and you ultimately have your wealth plan. Now, tomorrow we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about how to create a wealth plan, but this actually helps you do it digitally. So you know, over uh, uh, six modules, it could take you six days, it could take you six weeks. But ultimately, you walk away with your fully formed wealth plan. Why do you want to do it? What do you have to do? How do you have to do it? I've, um, you know, my, my partner Shane is incredible because he's built this all out. You have your full investor strategy sheet. So you know exactly what it is that you, uh, that you want to do, where you want to invest, how you want to invest, what assets you want to invest in. And again, by the way, this is your choice. Okay. But imagine if you had a coach that was holding you accountable to take you through this process and to make sure that you got there. Now, that course alone, is, uh, is, you know, if you take that, you've got the coach, which is $1,600. You've got that course, which is $497. And it's literally six modules that you can go through. So now you've got the information. 
But what about the partners? Okay, so the total value of that's $2,000. But what about the partners? Now you need the partners. And that's where asset class mastery comes in. And literally, we've gone through and we found the best partners. In private equity, we've used Calio. In London Residential Institutional, we use Gary Sachs. In ETFs, we've used Ann Wilson. In industrial, we've used Judd. You're about to learn from Judd. In medical office, we've used um, Bruce Saunders. You're going to meet Bruce Saunders. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just the most incredible people from around the world. So again, I taught you, there's only two things you need to know. The right information and the right partners. The right information, wealth going global. The right partners, asset class mastery. And if you take that, you've got the coaching, $1,600 for to literally be held accounts and have someone hold your hand. You've got the home study course, which is all about the information. And then you've got the asset class mastery, which is all about the partners. And people have been asking me questions in the chat box and they're saying, well, yeah, but Scott, like that's all great. I got the theory, but how do I get started? Well, you know, literally if you take that, that's a total value of $4,000. But what about our starter pack? You know, our platform is, is back live now with our FCA regulation. And so now literally we created the starter pack a couple of years ago where you literally could get started on the platform and you will be given $100 to be able to invest. Literally put in your wallet so that you can start investing. You'll get priority onboarding. So just by the way, if you've been to an airport and you stand in a nice long queue uh, or you go priority, like you go straight through. Or if you go to a bank and you like stand in a nice long queue or you have private banking and go straight to the front. Like that's what priority is basically. So you've got the coaching as part of literally the pathfinder. You've got the coaching, someone to hold your hand and take you on the journey for the next four months. You got wealth going global, literally the, all the information. You got asset mastery, which is the partners, and then you got the starter pack. Like literally, you get started and have money in your wallet to get going. The total value four thousand two hundred dollars. But now people have just asked, and they said, "Well, what about the deals? You got these Calio deals, and they're coming. And how do I get access?" Well, we got the Wealth Migrate platform. So you're going to get the coaching at sixteen hundred dollars, wealth going global, asset class mastery, the wealth starter pack. And you're going to get access to quality deals, just like the ones Calio showed you. You're going to get access to the quality information on, on you know, new deals, et cetera. Plus, you're going to get access to quality partners. And you can't put a value on that. Like, I put that at priceless. So, again, over $4,000. But what I've learned, and I call this an ethical bribe, call it whatever you like. People often have analysis paralysis, and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. I need to take action, but I, I, maybe I'm not sure it's Christmas. I don't know what to do. Like, maybe I should do it next year. Maybe the world's going to fall apart. Maybe Israel, like, and they just, da 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 the noise is like in their head. So what, what we've learned is that it's called an ethical bribe. It's literally a fast action bonus because it helps people make decisions. And so I get asked, well, Scott, what about if I do the course and I've got questions, et cetera? So what I've agreed to do is turn up live once a month uh, for the people that are part of the um, Pathfinder. And I'll literally just do an open Q&A session uh, monthly to be able to answer any questions that you've got. Uh, that, that for me is a huge, huge um, value add to you. I love it the best because literally I can answer any question people want. Um, having done this 28 years, there's, there's few I haven't been asked before. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find out the answer for you. But you know, I charge $1,000 an hour. So if you take the value of that, You've got the coaching at 1600 you've got wealth going global at 500 you've got asset mastery at 2000 you've got the starter pack at 200 you've got the the priceless value and then you've got myself you know and i charge a thousand dollars an hour so that's four thousand dollars minimum and then lastly just to you know chuck it all in as a fast action i love clem sunday he's been very very kind to me over the years he's a phenomenal guy if you're wanting to know about the global markets and where the world's going and what you need to know we literally did i i literally uh, paid him to come and speak to us and teach us what, about the latest scenarios, et cetera. And I mean, that's literally the value. Um, that we, now, you can't pay Clem Sunder just because I've worked with him for more than 10 years. So in summary, what is the Pathfinder about? You're going to get a coach that's literally personally going to give you eight sessions and take you from A to B over the next four months. You're going to get Wealth Going Global, which is all the information that you need. You're going to get Asset Class Mastery, which is the partners that you need. You're going to get a Wealth Starter Pack, which is the boom, let's get started. You're going to get access to the information and, and the new deals, et cetera. For the fast action bonuses, for those people that, that take action, you're going to get part of the next four months, literally November, December, January, and February, you'll do a live Q&A with me on any questions you've got, and you'll get the global scenarios. If you take the total value of the entire lot, it's literally $9,000. The challenge is we had one choice, you know, or even two choices. And Alex said to me, Scott, it's, it's, it's our birthday. Like, literally, we've got to make this more available to people. You know, $9,000, a lot of money to a lot of people. 
And, and so for us, it's this conundrum because when people pay, they pay attention. I like to deal with committed people. I like to deal with people like Michael that are prepared to just get on an airplane, fly to America, because 10 years later, they get the results they want in their life. And I love that. Like, I love nothing more than helping people get results. But I also wanted to make sure that, that more people could get access to it. So we had these two choices. So we could charge $9,000 easy. Per, you know, honestly, we could charge a hell of a lot more than that. I paid $8,000 just to go and spend a week with Dr. Dolph DeRus. And you're getting a hell of a lot more than one week here in terms of that process. But we're not going to charge that, you know, $9,000. For our mastermind, for the last 12 months, we've literally charged $5,000. And our logic was, we want to help you get a minimum of $5,000 in passive income. And if you're prepared to invest $5,000, you know, and, and you get $5,000 in passive income, then effectively our interests are aligned. And there's, you know, it's all about upside. We're all about alignment. And that's how we got the partnership with Calio. So people in the mastermind have worked one-on-one you know, one, one with me. We've worked with a like-minded group. We've worked with Calio. But now that we're 12 months in, we're looking to increase that. We're looking to increase first the goal of the passive income and the, the value that someone invests. So that's probably going to become a $10,000 plus product in the, in the next uh, month or so. Because literally, um, we, we have to increase the price. There's too much demand. Calio can't cope. I can't cope. So we're going to increase the price. So what our logic was, well, then the Pathfinder would be the logical step in at, at $5,000. Now, we're not going to charge $5,000, okay? But if I did charge you $5,000, okay, and it, and it helped you achieve your freedom goal, would it be worth it to you? Just type in a yes or no. Just type in, if, it, if you could get the freedom that you wanted, would, would, it, would, it, would, it, you know, would it be worth it? Now, $5,000 is a lot of money. I get that. But imagine 10 years from now, if you've got the freedom Michael has, you know, would that be worth $5,000? Yes or no? What about if, if that could help you, you know, have the peace of mind and that you knew your family and future was secure? Would that be worth it? You know? So again, you don't look at like, today this is expensive. In your head, you go, in 10 years time, would this be worth it? You know, it reminds me of a story in 1995. I slept outside the, the Newlands rugby ground. I'm, I, I love rugby, okay? And it was the opening game of the Rugby World Cup. And, you know, the tickets were 60 rand. I mean, 60 rand. I, I mean, it's, it's a ridiculously small amount of money. In those days, it was maybe like $6. And um, maybe even less, maybe even like, you know, I don't know, $10 or something. I don't know, whatever. And I remember phoning my dad. I was a student. And in those days, that was like three nights out in the pub. And I remember phoning my dad and going like, Dad, like, I don't think I can afford this. Like, it's going to cost me far too much money. And he said, son, don't think of it for today. Think of it for the memories of the future. And, you know, we went to that game with all my friends. We watched South Africa beat Australia in the opening game of the World Cup. Nelson Mandela was there. It was the most incredible day ever. To this day, it brings tears to my eyes. You know, that I've got those memories. And I mean, I was actually on TV now in the latest World Cup from that, you know, literally 28 years ago. And I look back now and I think, wow, like imagine I hadn't made that decision to spend 60 Rand, you know, the equivalent of like $5, um, you know, uh, 28 years ago the difference it's made in my life. And that, that's why I'm asking you these questions. It's not about you today. This is about your future self. You know, what about if it was to protect your wealth? So you built up your wealth, you, you've got your money and it was to protect your wealth. Would that be worth $5,000? What about your time? You know, I've shown you now, I've been doing this 28 years. I've shown you mistakes I've made and I can help you avoid those potholes. Would that be worth $5,000 to you? And finally, you know, you're wanting to build globally diversified passive income. You can do it all on your own, or you can do it with the partners. And I've only introduced you to a, to a handful of them. Would it give you the peace of mind? Would that be worth it in terms of, you know, what you're looking at? So I've got some good news. For our birthday, and literally today, it's all, you can literally have everything I just discussed in the Pathfinder for, for just under $3,000, $2,900. And you know what's interesting? Just last night, Alex went, but Scott, remember the story of Michael? And this is from Monday. And you got you got some uh, you got some luck actually, because Michael came live on Monday, even though he we couldn't hear his voice. And it actually reminded me because when Michael joined 10 years ago, 2013, the price then um, as a deposit to come on the buyer's trip was two thousand dollars. And um, I remember him phoning me and negotiating and saying, Oh, I don't have the money for two thousand dollars. Can I pay one thousand dollars? And you know, I don't really like doing that, but I was like, okay, fine. And I remember when we flew to America and he sidled up to me and he said, you know, what would you do if you had X amount of capital? And I was like, dude, I thought you were the guy that couldn't afford $1,000. And um, he literally said, no, no, I just wanted to limit my risk and I wanted to kind of dip my toe and get started. And um, anyway, you know, it's gone on to, 
to invest, you know, a hell of a lot of money and, and, and on top of that, you know, ultimately achieve the objective that he wanted. And it made me think, you know, because as Michael said, you know, it was the best money I, I'd ever spent. And if I hadn't have done it, I would never, it would have never happened if I tried myself. And he said that on, on Monday again, and I was thinking about it. And, you know, Alex, Alex tested me last night. He said, well, Scott, it's your birthday. Like it's our company birthday. Like, what are we going to do differently? And so why don't we make it more affordable to people? So we decided to do something ridiculous. I, I don't really know why I let Alex, um, you know, twist my rubber arm because really we're the one taking all the risk. Like the home study courses are there. You're going you're gonna to get access to them. The coaches have to get paid. And, um, but what we've done is we've made it more affordable. So we literally made it $697, um, but it's over the four months. So, so you, you, know, you don't have any lump, um, your lumpy, but it's affordable to everyone. You can literally get started. Now, I mean, the ridiculous thing is, Working with me, just me, one-to-one, -one is $1,000 an hour. And you're getting it less than that, like, over the next four months. Like, for me, I don't quite understand why, um, you know, Alex uh, got me to do this. Um, but I do understand it. It makes it more affordable for people. It allows them to get started. And, and in, the, in the recognition of Michael and Lee and their family, you know, maybe what we did 10 years ago was a massive gift for him. But it was also a massive gift for me, um, watching the results that they've got over the last 20 years. And so it's a replication of that. And because Michael came and gifted you guys on Monday, I wanted to gift you back. So, you know, that, that for me is, is, uh, is really important. It does expire at the end of October. So at the end of October, it'll go back to, to a one-sort price of 2997. And on top of that, we can only do it for 20 people. So, and the reason being is that we, we literally have a, a, another coach that's through my executive coaching program. And um, they can only, there's only a capacity for, for 20 people in terms of the process. So if you are interested, what you've got to do is you literally go to diversificationchallenge.com forward slash pathfinder. Um, you can book a call. You can literally talk to one of our team uh, to understand more. Um, and if you're committed and you're like, right, I'm in action. I, this is, I made a decision today. I want to be one of those top 20. Um, you know, I don't want to miss out. Then you can literally just go ahead and, and get going basically. And think about it. Like, Literally today, you walk away with a peace of mind going, yep, I got a plan. 2024 is going to be different in terms of that process. So um, just a question here. Archana has asked, what's the difference between the Pathfinder and the Mastermind? Um, I will talk about that more tomorrow. But in simple terms, the Pathfinder has been created with our two home study courses, which is our Wealth Going Global and our Asset Class Mastery. Both of the home study, you literally do them online. You're going to have a coach, a physical coach that's going to take you, but it's not me. It's one of the people that has done the same training as me. And they will take you through a process over an eight-week period um, in terms of which you're going to get the starter pack, you know, with regards to the, to the platform, et cetera. The mastermind is at a, a, at a different level. The mastermind is where you work personally with me one-to-one. Uh, -one. Um, you work personally with Calio one-to-one, um, -one, and you work with a small group of like-minded people. So, you know, for us, our Pathfinder is business class and our mastermind is first class. That, that's really the difference. Um, and you get to choose, you know, do you, do you want to do it with a home study course and, but have the coach? So exactly like the health thing, you've got the coach holding you accountable to help you get the results. Or do you want to go to the next level and, you know, literally do it with me, you know, have it done for you. And um, you work with me, you work with, uh, with our, you know, with, uh, with, with Calio. And, um, and we, you know, we go on a journey for the next 12 months um, to really kind of, and, and that's where, that's, that's where, you know, the goal is, you know, a minimum of $5,000 passive income um, as quickly as possible. Okay. And, and just by the way, uh, Cornelia, um, yes, all the resources in the Pathfinder will be available as part of the mastermind. Um, so you don't have to choose, like you can decide, do you want to fly, you know, this class or this class in terms of the process? I will answer more questions. I'm at a later stage. I just want to share in terms of, you know, what our clients have said, just in case you think, you know, well, I'm not too sure. Um, literally go and, go and look, you know, on Trustpilot, you can go and see. Um, many, many people have done um, the different courses. The feedback's been phenomenal. Um, one of the things that, that blows me away is the more people don't do this. Like, like, it is so affordable compared to what I was doing, even when I was like 25 years old. And the amount of money I was spending then you know, to fly overseas and to meet partners and to go on courses and whatever. And then I learned, I don't have to do it all myself. I can do it through partnership. And the amount of money I've paid, like partners to partner with them and to learn and, you know, et cetera. And the only reason that Calio and them are even talking to you and me is because we've done this for, for 10 plus years. 
you know, in, in the Wild Migrate platform and, you know, in, in through RPS and stuff for 20 plus years, facilitating $1.3 billion. And they know the power of community and they know the power of us coming together. So, you know, but if you're unsure, go and see what other people have said. Go and literally read all about it. Um, you know, and, and Shane can even put up a link there to testimonials if you're interested and you can go and see it. If, if you, you know, if you don't need any convincing and, you know, you literally just go to Pathfinder, make sure you're one of the top 20. I don't want you to miss out. Please don't cry and phone me and go, yeah, I missed out. I'm not one of the top 20 because um, we can only do 20. It, it's, it's, you know, obviously wealth going global and asset class mastery, hundreds of people, thousands of people can do that at home on their own. But to have a coach to hold you accountable, um, that takes resources and that takes time. And we, we've only got uh, 20, 20 spots available um, in terms of that process. So without further ado, let's move to Judd Dunning. Now, this is an incredible presentation, okay? And if you've got questions or whatever, just keep typing them in the chat box. I would recommend that you go to that Pathfinder link, this link here, because we will also do it in order. So even if you're not, you know, you want to listen to Judd now, just go to Pathfinder, put in your name and details, then at least it'll be logged. My partner, Alex, it's his idea, by the way, he deserves all the credit. Um, we'll be able to contact you and talk it through, even if you want to watch, um, you know, the thing with Judd, but just get yourself in the queue, because I think it's really, really important that, um, you know, I don't want people to miss out, but also you've got to understand that it's a birthday special and there's only uh, enough time for us to be able to do it. Um, yeah, you don't, Hella, you don't have to choose between the home study and the trainer. The Pathfinder is both. It's literally both. If you want the trainer and the home study together. And, and by the way, the home study works. I mean, trust me, I've done it with lots and lots of people. Okay. But what we found is that, and I'm, I'm the same. I mean, when I go to gym, I have a gym coach. When I have a, in business, I have a business coach. You know, so for me, I have a life coach. Like I've got a whole bunch of coaches because for me, that Harvard thing, if you want to go fast in life, you get a coach. It's just the way the world works. So for me, have the home study, which is going to give you the information and the partners, and then have the coach that's going to help you go through it. And it's a personal coach. You know, literally a couple of people, I think, Hella, you might have even been the person that I spoke to in the last couple of days, and they said they want someone to hold their hand personally. And that's, that's why we decided it was Alex's idea. Let's get one of the coaches involved to take someone on the journey for the next four months. And after four months, we expect you to have massive momentum. I would be surprised if half of you want to join the mastermind after that. But the bottom line is, um, you'll have massive momentum going into next year. Okay, without further ado, let's go to Judd Dunning. And I want to share, so let me stop sharing now. And I want to share with you this, because this, 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 this is going to blow your mind. The, the amount of information this guy shared, the value that he's got to share, it truly was just absolutely amazing. I look forward to your feedback. Awesome, Judd. It's so awesome to have you here. And uh, thanks for jumping on. I know we're not going to be live tomorrow, but you are in California, which means that it would be, I don't know, some ridiculous hour, like midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Um, but I didn't want people to miss your wisdom. And, you know, just before we get started a little bit, tell us, you know, you and I have been um, known each other for a couple of years. We've done a couple of deals with you. I mean, you just told me you've, you've closed over a billion dollars in the last three years, just to kind of put it in perspective. But let's just tell, before we go into risk and how to manage risk and partners and all that sort of stuff, who are you so that people get a context of, of who they're talking with? I always like to say human and capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> Surfer, fam, uh, dad and father. But besides that, because uh, I have a, I'll just digress with that one, one second. You know, I think about real estate, Scott, and the key element of it is, is like if we can, you and I can bless other people, uh, the prosperity we create in real estate is really about giving people more time to get back to family, nature, love, and God, right? I mean, real estate is amazing. It's what we do, but it has a higher purpose. So it's good to be with you again and, uh, you know, the investments we've, we've already done with you. Uh, Judd Dunning, I'm a third-generation American real estate man. My uh, granddad was, was digging ditches after World War II, and he ended up being the biggest GI builder uh, in Miami. And then my dad was in land and development. My uncle was a vice president of Merrill Lynch for 42 years, started middle markets in the United States. So um, after a 20 year run in, in film, I did it. I've been in American real estate last 20 years. Keller Williams, Sperry, Newmark Knight, went to the top institutional firms, big merger, turned 50, gave myself a 50% raise, opened our own shop. Uh, we still do in investment sales debt and equity and capital markets. We just closed a $77 million deal, 130 million, 55 and 70 on the investment side. 
joint ventures, debt and equity restructures. We just did a big mall here in, in Malibu and we work across the United States and we've closed in 40 states. And then uh, several years ago, we also opened up our own investment platform. And after working for Goldman and Chase and uh, all the different people we work for, we wanted to you know, make our friends and family wealthy and uh, our investors. So that's kind of been our, trans our transition over the last seven years. Yeah, and my understanding is, you know, I always joke when you and I talk because you talk American and I often have to translate for people between not just American, but also sophisticated uh, financial lingo, which, by the way, please don't stop doing because it's really important that people hear the real language. But in simple terms, also, you've been doing this for 20 plus years. And one of the things I always look for in a partner is significant. Like what you're about to learn now is 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 not only profound, but but it's also from someone who's been doing it for 20 years, not learned about it in a book or gone on a course, you know. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, you know, the great thing about being I'm 57 and the great thing about it is I've been through a couple of recessionary cycles. And so if you go through a couple of recessionary cycles, people tend to sit on the sidelines, Scott, and you'll see the deals you should have bought yesterday over three decades, uh, you know, continue to increase in value. American real estate's phenomenal. We have a great uh, legal system that supports our, 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 our free markets here. Uh, we got a vibrant uh, industrial base. It's, you know, we're a big country. We're isolated. You know, we're, we're geopolitically safe in a lot of ways that other countries are. So there's just a lot of resilience in our markets. And so the big thing I'd say, the greatest thing I have is just keep, you know, to keep investing through every market. And, you know, uh, Morgan Hauser in The Psychology of Money uh, can I said, say, uh, I, want to, I want to bring this up because literally today, you know, the whole focus is around risk. OK, and like the world's crazy. You know, we've got the Israeli conflict and everything else happening in the world. And people are like, oh, I'll tell you what, why don't I do nothing and just leave my money under the bed? And uh, what I want to share with people quickly, I'll, I'll get this up for you because exactly where Judd was going. So just by the way, um, I'll, I'll talk later about asset uh, class mastery. And Judd and his team did an entire presentation on the industrial American market, the opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to grab a few slides out of it for today's um, chat. But this is what you were about to go to just so people can visually see it. Oh, yeah, you have my presentation. Great, thanks. Yeah, the, you know, the key, basically, Morgan Hauser, we have enough data now you know, so that we know. So when people stop in a recession, recessionary cycle, they just go pencils down, which is a big mode, modus operandi you're starting to hear in the financial markets, individual markets. And there's a reason. If you don't have the right partners, I think that's a part of the topic of what you're talking about. If you don't, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't finish that point. And the point is, is that those of us that keep investing is 30% uh, wealthier at retirement than those than stop or stall. So you adjust your risk, you adjust your theory, you lower your yield expectations sometimes, unless you can have enough capital for an opportunistic buy, but you can't depend on opportunistic buys because other people are intelligent as well. There's definitely, there's four ways to get there, debt, death, distress, and divorce, right? There's always going to be humanity in every cycle, strong or, or low. So you're always going to look for those, but you don't rely on those four Ds. You just invest intelligently and consistently. So the good news is keep investing and so as we were saying, Scott, I was, I've, been, I've got three cycles here. And now every time the last two cycles where I serviced other people, but I didn't invest as aggressively, you know, those assets have doubled in value. So this time we're really aware of our position. I mean, we're, we're very active across the United States. So we know which markets we're going to go to and why, what asset class we're investing in and why, how to hedge the risks ahead and keep moving. And that's really the key to, to it. I think anybody who intelligently keeps moving, with adjusted expectations will be you know, much more successful than those that re are reactive. So let's talk now, you know, so let's take into account, you know, there's, there's good opportunity in America, but there's also risk in the world. And, you know, there's a lot of confusion and people are not sure what to do. I always dumb it down into two things. I say, if you want to manage risk, in my opinion, you've got to get the right information and you've got to get the right partners. Now, you and I were having a chat just before we, we got going and you were sharing with me about some of the information that's out there at the moment. And I'd love you to kind of go there and, and give people a ballpark. Like, where are you looking? Yes, you, you're aggressively investing during this time based on what you just said. But, but in what and where and why, you know? Sure. Uh, well, okay, we'll just do it. I like a fireside chat. It's kind of weird. Just, we'll just kind of go into that mode, not worry about everyone listening. Just Scott and I will continue that conversation. So before we met, I talked to Scott and I pulled up, a, I'll just throw up a few quick screen elements that I think are really the key of the, the essence. You know, there's opinions and there's facts, right? So we operate on facts. And if you look at global equities right now, the average returns are about 6.3%. Just a few quick 
slides here, 5.9. But if you look at real assets, global real estate still, and this is globally, so it's going to be much, 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 it's much higher here in the United States, but is lower, uh, is at 8.3. It's leading this sector, which is you know, awesome. And if you go to fixed income, if you, if you go for your longer term or shorter term, somewhere between three, two and seven, two, and we are bumping up against that. People are like, oh, well, I could leave my money in the bank right now at five, five in Mountain America Credit Union, which you can you know, in America right now, which is exceptional yield. And that's kind of what we're competing with. But you don't have the four, the four assets of how the wealthy get, the rich get richer in real estate, which is appreciation, depreciation, loan pay down and interest write off. And that's why a 10 yield in the stock market it equals like, you know, a seven after you pay taxes or a six, but a real estate yield at a, a seven actually might be a 13 or a 14 and a half, depending on how you've done your tax structures, what's happening on with depreciation. So, you know, that's the beauty of real estate and you have a physical asset, right? I mean, your equity can go away, but you don't lose your stock. It doesn't crash. You don't lose your credit rating. You can still work with that physical asset. So that level of safety. I mean, and then the you, alternative market. No, I'm just going to say, all, so what you're basically showing you is you're comparing different other asset classes. And we've spent a couple of days going through the different asset classes. And what you're basically showing is that the best performing asset at the moment with the lowest amount of risk is real estate or property. Some people know it as property, but effectively real estate or property. Yeah, bought, bought, bought properly by intelligent people with intelligent theories around intelligent debt, of course. So, and then of course you have alternatives, AI, you know, private equity, Bitcoin and, the, and these, but you know, you're going to take a much higher risk for a, what, nine, six to 8.3. So know your sector, know your lane. Like there's a lot of really smart real estate people. I happen to be uh, raised by a lot of them and I've absorbed a lot of that, you know, stand on the shoulder of giants is one of our, our theories here. You know, how do you get from contact to contract to yield the fastest because your money, you know, opportunity cost has capital. So that's just a global quick view. And I think that I, I was showing Scott this earlier, uh, just a few major points, right? Is that if you look at the, in the United States, we have 57% year over year slower uh, trading. So the, the volume has just come to a stop because people don't wanna, when they see the volatility when the Fed raising 15 times, 14 times now from August, right? We're, the money, our, we had loans at 319, we're getting quoted at 75775. In like literally just over a year, that's a 16 year trend breaker, right? But how do we keep going? And my uncle advice at Merrill Lynch, he said, don't worry. He said, we'll just outthink those politicians. You know, I would call them during the panic cycle. So you've got to have an intelligent theory. There's three elements to doing something really well in the business. You've got to have, and I wrote these down. You've got to have the grind. You've got to have that good work ethic or partners that really have it. You've got to have the view, you have to have an intelligent theory, and you have to have flow state, which means you've got to have all those elements together to get to your goal. And I think that's what investors have to come to the right partners and saying, hey, do you have grind, flow, and view? Are these people uh, and you know high integrity? So right here, 57% increase in volume. So that's interesting, right? But the same, but prices have dropped by 15%. So we've been through two or three cycles, but we keep seeing what happens in the markets. The markets keep going up over time. So people have a flight to quality. So then you have to think about, I just talked about the global view. I just talked about the cycles of, of that are tightening the markets, but then you have to go, what's not, what, what, is, what is contrarian action? Most people are in pencils down mode right now because they're reacting. What did Warren Buffett said, you know, be when the fearful get greedy, greedy get fearful, whatever, whatever the statement is, I, I, it's in my presentation, that you want to invest in contrarian cycles by being neutral, not being uh, emotional. So, uh, and then if you go down to the sectors of what's happening right now, what's going on in the world, you know, retail is changing a lot. It's a pretty volatile sector, but there are some good investments. Malls are down. Industrial is uh, past its peak performance, but remains strong. Multifamily has been tightening because it's a very mature market. If you have the right operators, you can still do really well in multifamily. The two darlings here are multifamily and storage is doing real well and industrial. We're all industrial in our fund. And um, it continues to have like 11.3% rent growth. This is, this is a sector that used to have 15% vacancy that has like 4% vacancy. It used to have a few points of rent growth. Now it's uh, had 15, 18, 20, now it has 11. So we still have length in that sector. So our theory, and I think we're pretty good at it. You see life, life science is doing well, office is having challenges. 
So there's a lot of changes happening in real estate right now. And so it's important. These are some great articles. I'll make, I'll make them available to you. Just a few quick, simple choices. And then you have to look at the difference of how cap rates relate to debt. So we're actually working on something called the nine cap funds, Scott. And it's not out yet. So it's just, you know, but we're basically in the theory. If you can get anything up to a nine right now, it's so historically average. Keep investing, keep, keep buying or anything above an eight. And, and, and with an intelligent add value theory because there's a whole nother cycle in industrial. So that's what we bring to the table is that kind of thinking. And it's not about us and it's not a pitch here for us. This is about just you know, talk sharing between friends. And on the other side, you wanna hit cap rate compression, right? So why would they compress? Like, why do you wanna buy assets and intelligent partners? You, they wanna mitigate risk by a good location or great credit. You gotta have one or the other in this situation, right? You be aware of what the sector shifts are. Uh, where are we having uh, uh, development in the markets and where are logistics changing? So these are all some great articles and they're really easy to find. But knowing the difference of, you know, being contrary in these markets right now is where people could get really wealthy. Like there's one cycle. Like I'm a medium adopter. A friend of mine adopted a little bit before me, made a fortune in the compression of industrial. We adopted. We did well. We're very confident there's going to be another cycle because it's just not a mature sector. So choosing your partners, choosing your asset classes, looking at the big view, looking at the small view, looking at your fundamentals and just keep investing, keep plodding along, I think is the greatest way to mitigate risk. Because if I put out 10 investments and if I have a challenge on two, which is OK, it's OK to have challenges in your portfolio. Find one a successful person that doesn't happen. We just had a tenant have an issue and uh, we brought in a PE company. We bought the company. So we solved that and we were able to bless our car. We didn't want a single tenant to have any, any relative issue like that. We have another, we didn't add value play and now we just significantly raise the rents. We have another one that we're structuring. We have 10, 10, 10 projects and they're thriving, but you know, we're, we're present. And so that's another thing in a partner. You also want to have people that think in multiple strategies of coverage to protect you when you invest. And I think that's what Scott, what you're doing and we're honored to be one of them is finding people that have a lot of experience and know what they're doing. Yeah, no, brilliant. There's so much knowledge you're dropping. It's like you just literally, you guys are getting like a Harvard MBA in, in like 10 or 20 minutes. It's bloody amazing. So thank you so much. There's a couple of slides here. And, and again, I know you you spent the best part of you know 90 minutes, two hours going into this in asset mastery. So I'm not going to go through and, and, and copy it all because I'll share with people how they can get access to Here's that. The quote. <laughs> yeah, and, and I just wanted to... I just wanted to, I love this slide from you, recession. You know, you, you've got here, there's actually six of them, I think it was, um, where you've got choosing partners, moving money. Do you want to just talk to this? Because again, we're in this cycle, this recession cycle. You mentioned some of them already, but I just wanted to see if there were other things that, that you hadn't mentioned, like the long game, choosing partners, et cetera. Yeah, well, I think we definitely addressed all of these. Like partnership is really key. I think that's why all of you work with Scott, right? And their company is because they're, I can tell you, I've been through, I'll, just, I'll be very transparent. Your, your uh, international process was months, <laughs> a lot of legal background checks, uh, credit checks, et cetera, like before we did international business. So, you know, that's, you know, kudos to, to uh, Global Wealth. You guys are very good at what you do. It was, it was a, a unique process. We, it was like the hardest KYC we've been through, know your client. And uh, Scott did a great job. So uh, moving forward during volatile cycles, just what I said, um, you've got to have people that have time. I'd say that's why we make fees. Like the sponsors make fees is like, like, you know, right now I've got a hundred thousand dollars on a deal that hasn't signed. Uh, we've spent six months working on this, you know, working through the, working through the environmental mitigation risk, doing a credit risk analysis, moving through all, all of that, you know, working through seven different debt files and paying three when we're only going to choose one at the end. Like we do all that heavy lifting, getting our accountants to figure out, the highest tax strategy. So even if the market's tightened, we have high yields in, uh, in, on a tax basis. So uh, knowing how to move forward and in, in volatile. So I have a friend, he said something great to me. He said, he said uh, you want to start paying your account as much as possible. He goes, that's where you spend the money rather than taxes. And the point is, is like, you know, you want to keep, when you're investing, think about how you're going to redeploy and redeploy and redeploy those gains because they're actual gains. So you have to keep that view. Um, the long game. Uh, yeah, I mean, for us, you know, I love real estate. Uh, and before that, I love my family. I love my friends. I love nature. I love God. I love my country. Like you, I'm sure a lot of your folks love your country, you know. So uh, 
uh, it's about, uh, you got to have a mission. Uh, Tony Robbins said something great. Uh, we were just talking about Tony Robbins before we got on. And he said, if you have uh, uh, work that, if you have success, but you don't have love, you don't have success. If you have work and you have success, uh, you have, uh, sorry, you have success and love, but you don't have an avocation, a hobby. If you're not having a good time, you're not, you don't have success. Like it's so important for a balanced life. So the long game is a balanced life. And I guess how that would relate to you, Scott, is you, you, you take out a lot of the guesswork. You make sure you dig into our files. You interview us hard, et cetera, like that. So you're finding places. How about the next slide? You want to go to the next slide? Uh, you should be able to, it's got market timing coming up. Oh, there it is. Okay, great. Market timing. Yeah. Sometimes buying early on the way down looks like being wrong, but it isn't. There you go. 15% reduction in cost. That's awesome. That's profit right in your pocket when the market's just simply stabilized. So let's say the cost of your debt is now 3% uh, higher, but you're buying when prices just drop 15%. And then you're confident because you understand history that the markets are going to return. Now let's talk about the debt markets for a second. The debt markets historically have returned within two years by about 200 basis points lower in the last like four or five cycles. So even in 2007, in the big one, right? They went down, they tightened, and then they untightened. And everyone's like, oh, well, inflation has gone up and we've normalized it, or this has gone. But eventually there's, a, there's another element going on in the banking world is they can only afford to play this game for so long. They can only charge so much capital. It's going to dry up. They're going to have to drop their capital down in order to stimulate making more money. So the banks themselves, right now, you've got a lot of trapped capital from the pandemic going, oh, you know, I'll pay 775. Well, in about two years, people are going to be like, yeah, maybe I'm not going to pay that anymore. And their, their supply and demand is going to go down. So the banks are going to lower their rates. They always do. So knowing that is really important in a market time. And when they lower their rates, as I had in that slide in there, it's hard to go into to show you, but there's, an in, there's a proportion between cap rates and debt. So we know debt's historically going to go down. Just got to play, play the long game, know the market timing. And so that 15% yield minus that 3% bump in your cost is you know, effectively, round numbers, about 12% of profit just because you invested in a down cycle and you're playing the long game. Um, about holding real estate. Don't wait to buy real estate, but buy real estate and wait. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't, I, I bought into Bitcoin three times. I don't know if you guys do Bitcoin, but uh, apparently it's doing well again. Uh, really, uh, the cycles that you have to work in on, and on when you're looking for those big pops rather than just sticking to your fundamentals. So the, the American markets, uh, like stock markets, average, they make about 14%, right? Real estate, we, we, we target looking for deals that are 25, 30% deals that we get privately if we can. Then we put in a few points of fees so we can afford to like provide them to our investors, right? But then you're looking for a great deal is if you, you, know, you want to try to get, uh, in five years, you want to double your money. So 20% return you know, every year. If you do that and you say, okay, well, I've got this year and this year and this year, I'm going to deploy this much money and I want to make 20% a year on this money. I'm going to reinvest. So get out an Excel spreadsheet. And just look for the model. And the model is you're going to get some 23s, you're going to get some 24s, you're going to get some 14s, you're going to get some 13s. You might lose once in a while. But if you think about real estate in its simplest form is I'd like to, if I'm a partnered person, I'd like to try to make 20% a year. And then my cash on cash, I'd try to like, you know, somewhere between six and 10 would be great, right? Now the markets were headed toward on preferential rates monthly. You were starting to see, I had a couple of deals I did at 10. You know, you're lucky to get a seven right now, but don't worry about that basis point. Like, look at the overall deal. Look at the overall picture. Remember that that 20 ROI is going to happen uh, annually in five years. As long as you get there in five years backwards, you've, made, you've doubled your money. So keep the long view in mind. Remember the simplicity of this type of investing, working with people like Scott. Um, about the bottom line. Uh, Love quotes, but in the end, knowledge has to be converted to worthless. Look, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be on my staff this morning at 5 a.m., I'll tell you, because I'm, I send out quotes every morning, and uh, I, I send out information. I have this theory, AI or die, right? We're trying to figure out how we can get to higher efficiencies, Scott, et cetera. And um, so, you know, I'm sending a list of, like, get these five debt quotes in, and, you know, get these 10 pieces out to the market. We have to call, email, text. And it's the same thing with finding deals. You really have to put in the energy and the time and you have to, hire, you have to find people that are driven because 
everybody's looking at the markets. There's an off-market sector, but 35% of the market likes to operate there because they bring in partners. So you have to be vigilant. You have to be clear. You have to be consistent. You have to build those relationships. So once again, full circle, honored to be one of the partners here at Global Wealth. So those, those are a few more, few more of my thoughts. You know, as you can tell, I'm kind of a real estate geek. Uh, we, I love the game. I always say, this doesn't make sense. I'll end with this. Uh, real estate is half war, half sport, and half spirituality. <laughs> so, you know, it's an inner excellence game. And so what we, the fun of us is, you know, we get to bring in all these partners. I think we have like 300 partners now and we get to bring those people together like you. And it's an honor to play. No, awesome. Listen, one last question from my side. And funny enough, that, that last quote was about action. And, you know, we, you can take the theory and you can turn it into action. And, you know, you did a you did a um, the asset class mastery for our mastermind participants, and as you know, th this was a, a forty. You can see it's forty five pages. You took them through everything from what are the different sectors, how does it all work, what is industrial, what are the risks, what are the opportunities. So we're not we're not trying to recreate the wheel because people can get access to that through asset class mastery. But let's just take a deal. So you and I invested in this deal along with uh, a number of other investors back in at uh, the end of July. It closed. Um, it's called a, a sale leaseback. Uh, again, without getting too complicated, it's an industrial building. You can pretty much see it's an industrial building. But give us the headline, you know, in terms of this deal. Um, you know, again, back to managing risk. You know, um, you know, a couple of pointers. I, I've got a couple of things I'll jump in, but I kind of wanted to see from your perspective. Yeah. You know, this super is the deal that's done. You can't invest it. We're not selling you anything. But I'm giving yeah. you an example of something we invested in the last three months. Yeah, super cool deal because. Uh, this market, Phoenix, is a, a perfect example of post-pandemic uh, industrial logistics shifts in the economy. So Phoenix is ultra hot in this sector, and the markets were down like we bought something like just sub six in this market like a year and a half ago. And uh, the market is uh, actually still it's a 5.85 cap average for industrial. And how do we get an eight eight? We actually got an 8.12 cap, I think, by the end by the time we got done. But this is at this juncture. Um, we got it because somebody read our press release on a deal we just closed in, in Spartanburg. And I got a phone call from somebody out of the country and the out of the country person. This guy had this on the market for like 11 and a half million. We, 11, eight, we all in cost, I think it was like 10, 10, four by the time we finished the deal. And um, uh, the cap, I sent it out to the banks and the banker's like, how'd you get this? He goes, this is a 5.85 cap market. And so that just shows you even in any cycle, like relationships matter. So that, and for me too, I was like, great, you know, my, my investment, my press team matter. There's always somebody out there under the four Ds. So this guy um, just, was in a lawsuit. Just quickly, just quickly I'm just going to jump in there to make, to talk English for everyone. What you yeah. basically just said is the guy wanted 11 and a half million dollars. He was outside the country. He wasn't marketing right. He didn't have the right team on the ground. You offered him a very good deal at 10 million plus dollars. And, and as the bank said, how did you get the deal? Because it's such a good deal. And my understanding is that the day of closing, at the day of transfer, there was a million dollars of value that was on the table immediately just by buying right. And one of the laws of property or real estate is always try and buy at the best price because then you're locking in, not only protecting yourself against risk, but you're also locking in the potential for upside. Yeah. Yeah. And there were little challenges. The debt markets were moving. You know, we had a lower quote at the very beginning. Then we ended up getting a longer amortization, 30 year AM. We ended up getting a little bit of interest only. So the debt markets were doing this and we had to surf it in. Like we were out to like every market, like playing three or four banks. And then we ended up finding that theory to give those yields. So, you know, everybody's getting a really nice, strong yield day one. 7% uh, on this in an A market is a, is a great yield for this particular market. Uh, that goes up over time. Seven percent again. Just sorry, I'm, I know I'm butting in, but I'm just trying to like that's seven percent in your pocket. Like if you invest a hundred dollars or a million dollars, you're getting seven percent of a hundred dollars or seven percent of a million dollars. You're getting in your pocket every year positive cash income. I know a lot of people don't think it's possible, but in commercial property, when you buy assets, they put money in your pocket. Yeah, the preferential return. And how do you think of preferential return? I like to simplify it. The sponsor, the partner, and you agree that the cost of your money, we're taking some of the profits from the back end and we're going to give it to you right away every month. So it's real cash flow the day, the month, we, a month from when we close and every month. And this goes up, you know, 25% every year. That's how I structured it. So it's really about 8% uh, over the holding term, 
which is, you know, good money. And then, you know, with the outcome in the building, you know, we're hoping that, you know, we'll hit that 20% marker. That's always the goal. People, we're starting to, ex we're starting to express 17. We have to, you know, our job is to under promise and over deliver, but that's why I put 17 to 20. I mean, I think we're being humble. I mean, somebody, an owner user comes in and grabs this site at the end, if there's ever an issue with the tenant, which you don't see, or uh, at 15 years, we've got, a, 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 we've got an asset to sell the 15 year lease and a bigger company in the heart of Phoenix. Uh, actually, this is if you go right the street, there's brand new multifamily. It's not in the middle of anywhere. So when I showed you the chart, uh, urban location, this is a great location. And actually, you see, it looks like a bunch of industrial. You go right at the street, it's brand new retail, big ASU multifamily. So we did well on this deal. So we got a good deal and a good urban location, private relationship. We got a, a eight cap and a sub six cap mark, as it says on there. So that was just a, a really nice element. And also, what was cool about it is this used to be a Coors distributorship, which is cold storage. It was a very hot and expensive asset class. So we bought something, you know, 50% of its actual cost to build. And that's a great fundamental. And uh, so we, that was another positive. And the rent growth was good. Tenancy was good. We had to do a lot of structured financing on this. This thing took time. We had to get that tenant ready to let go of the building and get, just own the business so he could prosper the business. The sale leaseback is really simple. Is we pick American businesses in middle markets where we we look at their, we analyze their credit and we say, sell us your building, become our 20 year tenant, 15 year tenant. You go out and prosper with what you do and we're gonna prosper at what we do in real estate. So it's a really neat sector because because you're taking that intelligent risk, you can get a higher cap rate usually because they're looking at the cost of expanding a business. And hopefully a business returns 20 to 30%. So when they sell us the real estate and take their money, they're going to turn that money around and go ahead and multiply it through a business. So it's a little different equation. Very, it's a fun asset class. Yeah. So I mean, in simple terms, if you take this deal, you know, some of the things I liked, America is a strong market. You know, Phoenix is one of the top three cities in America in terms of growth. Uh, secondly, uh, thirdly, industrial is literally the top sector at the moment in property in America to be in logistics and, and this whole area. Um, and then and then you've got some of the fundamentals that that um, Jan has alluded to. You were buying it at a 25% discount. That's what it means, uh, eight and a six cap in simple terms. Um, you were also getting an 18 year lease, 18 year lease in place. Um, plus you were buying it at a 50% of replacement cost, which means that to rebuild this building would cost double the price than the price you're buying it for, which is a very good indicator that you're buying it at, at below price. And there were lots of price comparables they did to other buildings and other rentals in the area. And again, I don't want to steal the thunder of um, what we do in the mastermind because we went into all that detail. But I just wanted to give people a feel for the type of investments. And I think I'll finish off with my final question to you, Jade. If you take a deal like this and, you know, someone's sitting overseas and, and to be honest, like I don't care if they've got $1,000 or $100 million, the chances of them coming to America, finding the right city, Finding the right sector, finding the right partner are virtually zero. And I know that I've done this for 28 years. Um, Hard. So, you know, from your guys' perspective, why do you partner with, with international people? What's the value add? If, if it's so good in, you know, in, in locally, why aren't all the Americans investing? Because I know that's how people think. And, you know, back to risk. What's the value add in you not only having local partners, but having international partners to invest with you? Well, we love we love working with you. First of all, it's fun for us because look, when we look at a deal, you know, we talk to Scott. We say, you know, well, I'll get to the logistics of it, which is interesting. Like, we have to guarantee the debt, so I personally have to guarantee, you know, seven million dollars of debt to do that deal. Right? Our investors don't guarantee the debt; they just put up their capital through global wealth. Right? And if they if we exceed over twenty percent then all the investors or the collective investor would have to assign the guarantees on the loan. So it's one thing to risk your debt. It's another thing to risk your house <laughs> and everything you own. This is called a full global guarantee. My wife is on these on our 10 properties, right? So uh, we go out there and we secure the asset and we secure the debt. Securing the financing in America as an international, by the way, is also exceptionally hard. It's hard to get debt if you're American right now. So that complexity has to time out perfectly. You know, we'll bring in that 25 to 30 percent of cash, right? That will pre-fund uh, from our balance sheet. Then uh, you guys come, your team comes in, and we invest it. But you know, we only uh, 
we have a relationship with you up to 20% because Scott properly as a fiduciary doesn't want everybody on loans in America. So that's really the biggest barrier, right? We find the assets, we find the debt, but you don't have to sign in the guarantees. We make, you know, your sponsors make a little bit of fees because we provide the asset, a little bit of the cash flow. We share in the investment with you, you know, moderately. Uh, you know, that's really the way that there's a path. There's an industry path. We're all within those industry standards and Scott knows those standards. So yeah, that, that's, that's another element. I don't think people think about it. It's like this sector to play, you have to sign everything you own over every time. So I pay, you know, $50,000 to credit risk guys from top firms to look through all their financials, figure out their books. Cause it, when you go to stock market, you buy something on the markets, you get a lower yield, like a five, a five yield. We're getting eight or nine yields. Well, you've got, you know, bonded credit on the S&P rated globally, right? When you buy these, we have to do be the S&P. We have to rate the tenant. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of specific work. And I, I couldn't have done this when I was a younger man because I've done enough JVs and I've done enough sales and I've done enough debt and enough equity and I've worked in enough states. I've sold enough businesses, I've owned businesses that now I can look at the business, I can look at the real estate, I can look at the debt markets. We can create this pie for you, which is the sale lease back and you get here. So it is a difficult sector. And I just wanna end with this, if I may, is you know we have something new coming to you and uh, you know they've got $500 million in sales, but they're buying so big, their books are really big. We have to figure out their books. We're doing like institutional accounting on a half a billion dollar company while we're doing the mitigation of all the stuff and it's a PE flip, they're flip the, the private equity company is buying the real estate in the business and flipping DWG, the real estate. So, you know, we got a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, of our own money at risk until the close, which has risk. Cause if the business falls through purchase, we don't get the real estate. So we're out there, you know, finding these, these gems. And I, fortunately I've been trained by some really sophisticated men. So it's a lot of fun to partner with your team there internationally. No, awesome. No, well, Jada, I really appreciate your time. And, you know, just to, just to summarize what you said there, I teach people when it comes to partners, you know, the first thing, are they putting their own money in the deal? You know, you're not only putting your own money in, but you're also taking um, security on the debt and everything, as you said. The second thing for me, do they have 10 years plus experience? You guys have 20 plus, you know, 20 plus years experience in this sector. And the third thing for me is, you know, are the interests aligned? Like, do they try to make all the money up front? Or is it a case of actually it's about making the investors money and on the assumption everyone wins, you guys make money. And 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 the way that's set up is very much in the alignment. So I, I love the way that you guys do deals. Um, and the last thing I would say is that, you know, the 20% thing is a really, really important um, uh, change of mindset most people need to have. Because in the old days, it was I, I must control everything because then I've like got less risk. But it's absolute rubbish. And particularly when you're investing internationally, it's far better to own less than 20% as an international investor and have 80, 90% American investors and be a sucker fish on a whale than to try to be the whale in a foreign country. And when stuff goes wrong, you have to fix it and it doesn't work. So it's just a philosophy that, that I think is very important. Yeah, the diversification element, it's really great. You know, buddy, I, I will tell you why I'm sitting here with you all. Like, I want to invest in global because the point is, is, you know, the investors get this locked check coming out. We're obsessive, you know, every month right away. Then they get that exit proceeds with a refinance or a sale or a hold, whatever we do over time. Uh, it's a it's a very low maintenance way to do. You, decide, you, you analyze the partner, the market, the asset, you make your investment. And now I've become friends with people that have like 50 of these investments that we I mean, like people like us invest in people like us. And some of them are really free. I mean, I've seen like, I never thought that there because I've always been at the front, but the people that 10 years ago started group investing 20 years now, 40, 50 assets, some of them are financially free, you know? So I'm really, I'm really honored to be a part of this new burgeoning community. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Uh, wonderful. I look forward to getting into some more new deals with you. All right. Thanks a lot. How awesome is that guy? <clears throat> Come on, check in the chat box. I know that... Uh, you know, like a lot of information, I get it completely. Um, whenever Judd, when, when he did the asset class mastery for the mastermind, um, I had to like almost be a translator because he talks about so much stuff and it's like so valuable. Um, but luckily for me, I've been doing business in America since 2010. And so I, you know, can kind of translate what they're saying uh, because they, they, they like, there's so much incredible information he shared there. But I'm also aware that like, 
a lot of it goes over people's head. And by the way, I don't care how sophisticated you are. If you're not used to American lingo and American capital markets and the way they talk, you know, there's a lot of things like a language. And, and you know, this is why I often joke, like if you, everyone thinks we all speak English, we don't. In America, they call it closing. In South Africa, they call it transfer. In Australia, they call it settlement. Um, and in England, they, I'm just going to forget what it's called. But anyway, in England, they call it something different. Literally, four things for when a property transfers, settles, closes, okay, which means ownership changes. In the, in the English language, in four different English-speaking countries, they call it four different things. So don't, don't get overwhelmed if, if the language thing is, is difficult. And that's, that's why we're here. Like, we had to hold your hand. Like, I learned this for 28 years. I can share it with you, or you can try and learn it all yourself, like, in that process. Um, I also want to, so there's some, uh, there's some lovely comments coming through here. Need to watch the replay completely. Look, don't get me wrong. Um, and, uh, and Eugene and the others that have joined, you know, congratulations. Like, you're on Pathfinder, dude. Like, like we're going to hold your hand now. Like, um, he literally spoke for nearly two hours on industrial as part of the asset class mastery. And I did a lot of the time translating. And, you know, with all due respect, I would do it like I did it with Dr. Hannes Dreyer many years ago. You know, I got his property course. I think it was like 2002. <clears throat> I bought the course. I watched it seven times. Seven times. Okay. Because when you watch something, you think you get it. And then you watch it a second time. And you're like, oh, wow. Like, I really didn't get this. Oh, wow. Like, I really didn't get this. And after like seven times, like, it started to make sense to me. And now I can talk to you like, like I know, like, like it, I've known it all my life. It's rubbish. I've spent so much time and effort, like, educating myself in, to be able to speak this language. And, um, you know, and then I had the privilege of working with Dr. Anish and I watched him present live on stage. And I thought I knew it all. And then I, like, I watched him do it six times. And, and. Every day, it was like a full day presentation. Every day I watched him do it, I was like, oh, wow, no, I missed this part, I missed this part. So, you know, there's no part, there's nothing more valuable than repetition as the power of skill. And, you know, bring it back to this to finish off today. Because if, if you want to know about risk, you know, there's nothing worse than losing money. And the biggest mistakes I've made where I've lost my own personal cash and like, you know, with other investors, I've lost, I've lost money is when we've had this old school mindset of trying to do it all ourselves. You know, we've got two examples of this, one in, one in Australia, one in America. The one in Australia is this developer that, that effectively went under, and I could give you the whole long story. But the problem is we had all the capital in the deal, other than him. But the point is he, he went under and walked away. So now we're trying to manage a bloody big hole in Australia. It's a disaster. Okay. Um, we will fix it, and we, we're losing time, and hopefully we won't lose capital. But, it, but it's, you know, it's so horrible to have to manage it long term. And that's why I never do this anymore. I'll never, ever take all the deal. This is old school. I'll never partner with anyone that has an old school mentality. And um, the other one was in America, where we've got medical buildings. They're great medical buildings. They've got tenants. They're paying dividends, uh, except, uh, sorry, they're paying rents. But except the, the guy defaulted. He took all the money himself. Fraud. Like, it's literally a fraud case. And the banks have defaulted on the property. And now we as investors are in serious trouble. Once again, Old school mentality, all the money in the deal. It's literally him and us. You know, if we had if we had 80% Americans in there, trust me, like they would be they would be sorting that out a lot quicker than a bunch of foreigners from overseas. So I like this is all the mistakes I made, you know, like 10 years ago. I'll never make those again. Like I only work with people like Calio, Judd, you know, and it's this new age mentality, you know, I'm, again, to repeat what I said already, sucker fish on a whale, baby. Let me be a sucker fish on a whale, you know. Partnership, mastery, everything I've taught you. Best way to manage risk, literally, like, you know. And again, I remind you over and over again, what are the two things? Let's see if people can remember. What are the two things that you need most to manage risk? Please just type them in the chat box. Let's see if, uh, let's see if today has, has rounded up. I know it's a lot of information, but if we can synthesize it at the end. And well done, Hella. You're the first one to get it right. Right information, right partners. Partner information, Eugene. Sean Craig, right information, right partners. Information and partners, Larry, well done. Hugo, well done. Diane, well done. Tumi, well done. Paula, well done. Karen, uh, partners and info, well done. Mona, well done. So I think, I think finally my repetition's paying off in terms of everyone, uh, everyone getting it, basically, in terms of the right information, right partners. So well done to, uh, to Banu, to Linda, to Ilda, to Cheryl. Uh, so well done to all of you, um, you know, in terms of it. So, so well, so let's, uh, let's wrap up for today in terms of where we're at. That's Judd Dunning, one of the favorite people I love working with, and his philosophies are just amazing. I learn so much from him every day. 
you know, I, I did that recording yesterday, but I watched it again now. And it's like, oh, wow. Like I learned so much just from this guy every single time he talks. And again, I've said this to you so many times and let me bring it up because again, repetition is the mother of skill. You know, do you think I learned more from this guy by just coming along and doing a course with him? Or do you think I learned more by partnering with him? We're starting to get the, the pattern here in terms of where we're at. Okay, I've got a gift for you. And the guy's name is Bruce Saunders. So Bruce and I, um, Bruce went to America in 1997. He's a South African CA. Uh, he went over there with Deloitte's, I think. PwC or Deloitte's, I can't remember, one of the big ones. And he got into doing auditing of real estate firms, property companies, and he's been in property ever since. So he's been in the market now for 25 years plus. Um, we were trying to get into commercial property. So we started investing in residential property in America since 2012. It took me two years. So I went on my first trip to America uh, to buy property in 2010. I uh, literally, after five weeks, I went home with my tail between my legs. I couldn't find any partners I could trust and I couldn't get the right information. So I went home. I did nothing for two years. I came back in 2012 and I found the, the right partners and um, I found the right information and we started investing. And uh, But we were all in residential at the time, but we wanted to get into commercial, specifically medical. And um, anyway, long story short, through one of our mutual um, investors, uh, again, back to collaboration and community, um, we literally, a lady by the name of Mandy Clark, she introduced us to Bruce, her husband, and, um, and Bruce had been uh, at articles together. Uh, we, we, we spent six months with Bruce, probably went to America three times, four times, looking at deals uh, all, you know, the entire time through 2013 and, and six months into 2014, we were looking at deals and every time we were just too slow. It was literally like just, it was just too quick to get in the deal. And eventually Bruce sat me down. He said, Scott, you can't find a deal and then go back overseas and try and raise the money. It doesn't work like that. You need, in America, you need to commit. So we had this amazing deal. His partner was Paul Shalanda. And we sat down, we went and looked at this building. It was $16 million. Yes, I said that right. $16 million, $10 million in debt from the bank, $6 million in equity. And um, he literally said, like, right, we're, we're, we think we should take down this deal. We're prepared to come in and get the debt. We'll put our own money in the deal um, as well. Uh, this is a really good deal. These doctors are in distress. We're going to get this at a really good price. We can um, increase the vacancy, et cetera, et cetera. Like, basically, we can create value quickly. Um, and they created a million dollars of value quickly. Uh, but the problem was we had to raise $6 million and literally we had 90 days. And I'll never forget sitting around the boardroom table and he looks at me and he goes, are you in or are you out? And everyone looks at me and I'm like, well, I don't know, I don't have $6 million myself. And I was like, but, but you know, I'm going to teach you about this tomorrow. When you make a commitment, everything changes. I'm going to teach you about this tomorrow. It's a lesson from Andrew Carnegie. It's one of the greatest gifts I was ever given. When you make a commitment, everything changes. And literally, I've said this to you yesterday, when there's a will, there's a way. Like, it's amazing how the universe just opens up when you make a commitment. We made a commitment. $6 million, 90 days later, we we'd raised the $6 million. We closed on those deals. We earned a 9% a, a cash on cash return for five years. We then sold off the buildings. Um, we made a great capital gain in terms of the return. And Bruce is going to not only share with you, you know, this is now 10 years after that. He's going to share with you what's happening in the markets, you know, what are the different sectors to look at? What's happening with interest rates? He's an accountant by background. And we've got a gift for you. So I'm conscious of the fact that today, you know, people need to get back to their to their day jobs and, and to their work and to their businesses. So we put it up as a link for you. You can go and watch it. Um, I'd highly recommend it. I love investing with Bruce. He's super conservative. When he says he's going to give you an eight, you've got more chance of getting a nine than you have of getting a seven. And I much prefer someone to tell me what the number is and be conservative and outperform it, then be the other way around. So Bruce is probably the guy from a due diligence perspective that I trust more than anyone in America and could think of nothing better than working with him, which is which is what we do. So yeah, there's the link, diversificationchallenge.com forward slash real estate. And I'm sure Shane would have put it up in the chat box. Yes, he has. What a, what a wonderful, just by the way, round of applause for you, Shane. Like none of this would happen without Shane. Um, he's, he, you know, he's behind the scenes, he's making it all happen. He's getting all the partners, making all the landing pages and everything work. So I guarantee you, you wouldn't, uh, none of this would exist without chain. Anyone like me can just talk on stage, but you actually need to fly the airplane and he's doing an amazing job. So let's finish off for today. I remind you that, you know, if you had that medical condition, we've agreed that you would literally want the trainer. Just by the way, Alex came to me and said, hey, Scott, a bunch of people are saying, I really want to be in the mastermind, but I also want the trainer. So I tell you what, Literally as a bonus for today, if people commit to the mastermind, 
um, after that chat to me, you have to apply, but after that chat to me, um, if, if you just type in their mastermind, um, to the, like today you make that commitment and on the assumption I meet with you and you qualify, um, I'll chuck in a, a coach for, for, um, for the eight, for the four months, eight sessions uh, for free. Uh, just so you don't have to make a decision, take, take decision off the table, um, in terms of where you're at. So it's our birthday and that's why, uh, you know, we, uh, <laughs> These guys are all twisting my arm left, right, and center. Uh, so take advantage of me. It's our birthday. Uh, so let me just remind you what the Wealth Pathfinder is about. A Pathfinder is a person who goes ahead and finds the best way to travel through an unknown area. It's a personal group that's the first to do something and makes it possible for others to do the same. Again, diversification, globally diversified passive income. I'm not aware of other people that are doing what we're doing, making it easy, simple, and safe for you investors to be able to do it. I mean, I'm literally taking what I've done for 28 years. The team's taking, our partners are taking, and we're trying to make it easy for all of you in terms of that process. So, yeah, thanks to the guys that are putting down Mastermind. I'll reach out to you, and we'll uh, we'll see if there's a way to make a plan in terms of that process. Again, to remind you, you know, there's theory out there, and then there's stats. According to Harvard, you've got a 400% better chance of getting results with a coach. You know, there's a reason why the best sports teams in the world have coaches. The best sports athletes have coaches. The best business people have coaches. The best business teams have coaches. And then I ask myself, why don't you have a coach? So imagine having a personal one-on-one -on -one coach for the next four months, guiding you, holding you accountable to implement. Again, I literally was trained by ThoughtSmith, which is an international organization. It took us 150 hours of accreditation. Uh, so I know these people are fully qualified. They've been through my process. And I've literally reached out to them and said, come and help me. I can't do it all on my own. But people need help. We need to drive this process through. So what are you going to get? You're going to get the coaching for $1,600 worth of value. You're literally going to get wealth going global. How do you choose the right countries, the right currencies, the right assets, the right partners, and the right time? This is all about information. This is the right information. So if you add that, it's literally you know another $500. Now it's about the partners. What about all the different asset classes? How do you find the right partners? Hopefully by the close of today, you've realized you can't do this all on, the own, on your own. The only way is through partnership. And so, you know, that's what it's all about with the partners. So you've got the coaching to hold your hand. You've got the Wealth Going Global to give you the information. You've got the Asset Class Mastery to give you the partners. But now you actually need to get started. And that's what we call the starter pack. And literally, we make it easy for people. So you've got the coaching, you've got the information, you've got the partners, and you've got the starter pack. We literally put $100 into your wallet so that you can get going and start investing in, in the deals. And then, you know, through the platform, you're going to get not only the access to the coaching, the info, the partners, the starter pack, but then you're also going to be able to make investments. You know, and uh, our minimum investment, we've, we've got it as low as $10. So there's no one here, no one on this call that can tell me that they can't get going. It, it doesn't exist in terms of the process. And by the way, don't get confused with $10. We've got plenty of investors that have invested millions of dollars um, in the process and, and where they're at. And then finally, call it an ethical bribe, call it whatever you like. Some people sit on the fence, analysis, paralysis. It's called a fast action bonus. I'll chuck in uh, myself sitting uh, on a monthly Q&A for anyone that's part of the Pathfinder. Remember the mastermind, you know, you, you've got personal access to me, but for the Pathfinder, I'll jump just on a monthly basis and do a Q&A with you if there's anything I can help with. So you've got the coaching, the info, the partners, the starter pack, the platform. You've got me on the, on the Q&A. And then finally, you know, someone who I deeply respect and truly actually was one of the major catalysts in, in my own career is Clem Sunter. And, you know, he did this wonderful session for us. And we'll chuck that in um, for you if, if you take um, action, you know, before, before the end of the month. So you're going to get the coaching to hold your hand. You're going to get all the information that you need, the right information. You're going to get the partners, the right partners. You're going to get the starter pack. So you've got no excuses with the priority onboarding. You're going to get the platform so that you literally have the access. You're going to have me to be able to ask any questions you want over the next four months. And you're going to have Clem Sunter to look at the global scenarios. Yes, it's you know over $9,000 worth of value. We, I told you about the two choices. Quite frankly, we should be you know, probably putting it up and making it a lot more, a lot more you know, expensive. But at the end of the day, we are here. One of the things that we're passionate about is helping everybody to be able to invest like the top 1%. So we're not charging $9,000. We're not even charging 5,000. Yes, this is, the, this is the, the value or the investment people making themselves to be part of the mastermind. That will be going up uh, to 10,000. 
um, and, and this will be replacing it at, at this price range. But for now, because it's our birthday, we're not going to do it. Imagine, though, based on the value, if that gave you a freedom, if it, if it helped you be you know, peace of mind and, and to be secure, if it helped you protect your wealth, if it helped you save decades of time, and if it gave you ultimately the globally diversified passive income, I virtually guarantee you, you would walk out the door and say, I, it, it, this is not a should, it's a must in terms of the process and, and how to actually do it. So that's the, that's the, uh, the price in, in terms of you know, the Pathfinder and, and what you're getting. Um, it's, it's very, very affordable at the moment uh, compared to where it's going to go uh, once the birthday special ends. And to remind you again, it was actually Alex and Michael Honey said that, that made me remember that, you know, Michael, you know, we gave Michael a great gift 10 years ago, but watching his success over the last 10 years, he's given us an even better gift back. And when he said to me, you know, it's the best money I ever spent when I joined. And the fact that, you know, he would never have done it without us, um, you know, it made me think, and that's when Alex came to me and said, hey, why don't we do this over four payments as a birthday special? Let's just make it a no-brainer for people. And it's a bit like the Michael thing. You know, I'm not interested in $600 or whatever. Truly, it's not going to change my life. It won't even make a measurable difference or a dent. But I'll tell you one thing. If it has any impact like it had on Michael and so many thousands of other people, then why not make it easy for people to dip their toe in and get started? So that's our birthday. And the question is, what would you do on your birthday? On a birthday, you want to celebrate. You want to have fun. You want to share. You want to give. You want to add value. Hopefully, you know, that's why we've done this challenge. So that's why it's literally six ninety seven over four months. If you haven't taken action, you know, I highly recommend that you do. I know a couple of people have mastermind bookings with me. Don't worry, we'll reserve your spot. Um, I'm not into rushing people. I'm really not. Um, you know, I, I want to deal with the right people for the mastermind. However, saying that, you know, there is a constraint. It, it just is a fact of life. You know, at the mastermind level, there's only so many people I can personally work with and Kelly I can personally work with. And equally at this level, because we've got the coaches and stuff involved, there's literally a constraint. Um, so it is our birthday special. We will only be doing it in the, in the month of October. And we can only do it for 20 people. And quite a few people have already signed up. Congratulations to all of you who have signed up. You know, if you want to think about it, if you want to talk to your partner, no problem, go and do that. Um, if you want to come back tomorrow, I'm going to be summarizing everything and most importantly, turning it into an action plan. Um, you know, and, and you know, you'll certainly have time tomorrow and the weekend, whatever. But just don't leave it after, after the end of the month because then it'll go back to the full price. So there's the link. I know um, Shane's put it in there multiple times. And, you know, back to guarantees, et cetera. You know, we're literally giving you stuff. We're the ones taking all the risk. We're literally giving it to you. You know, we're giving you a product worth $3,000. Well, worth a hell of a lot, $9,000. But even to today's value, $3,000. And we're literally saying, give $697. we are taking all the risk because we're giving you the stuff and assuming that you're going to do it over four months. But why do we know that? Because we know that it's good. So, again, if you don't trust me, go and see what all our clients have got to say. Um, you know, Shane's already shared the link and you can go and see what so many people have said, written and video, it's all on Trustpilot, et cetera. So you can go and verify. It. So let's go to the action steps. I was given um, some feedback that we should be posting the action steps. So Shane has decided to put it in the resources guide. So, you know, for each day, all the action steps are there, silver and gold to make it easy. So your action steps for this day, identify a specific risk in your current investments and outline how diversification can mitigate it. So look at your current investments and, and see where the risk might be. Name three things which you can do to find the right information and the right partners. You know, one of them might be, you know, join the Pathfinder. One of them might be join the Mastermind. One of them might be, I don't like you guys. I'm going to go do it all myself. No problem. But what are the three things you're going to do to find the right partners and the right information? The third thing, you know, seriously consider the, the Pathfinder. If nothing else, go there, book a call, have a chat with Alex. It was his idea. He's the brainchild. He deserves the credit. And um, yeah, have a chat with them, um, whether it's right for you or not. And then lastly, you know, share a key takeaway. I, I can't overemphasize how much value you're going to get if you share with the world. And again, Zig Ziglar's principle, you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And the bonus, you know, the gold, go and watch Bruce Sanders. Trust me, He's one of the best I've ever dealt with when it comes to property. There's no one I trust more in America to understand and talk to me about what's happening in the American market. And that's why I wanted to share this as a gift for you in terms of the process. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, there's our formula. Literally, if you want globally diversified passive income, you want to diversify across countries, currencies, assets, partners, and time, 
you can literally go and you can dabble so you can hear all about what we've discussed and you can kind of go off and do something else you can stress you can try and figure it all out yourself and try and beat yourself up and try and go and do all this yourself by the way that's what i did i strongly don't recommend it um and then in 25 20 2010 i found the key which was mastery and partnership just completely accelerates that process in terms of so I'll finish off with an African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So time for the q and I'm conscious of the time, so I'll be bouncing into the room quick, quick to answer any questions that anyone has. And, you know, just to remind you in the Q&A, um, again, every day we answer questions. I told you to join up for VIP right in the beginning for $47. It's like a ridiculous amount of money. Um, you know, to be able to spend, you know, five live sessions with me. Um, all the replays of both the, the challenge and the, the, the VIPs are going to be available to you. You'll have a lifetime access to it. And by the way, you're going to get module one of the countries for $47. So I don't believe there's anyone on you that can turn around and say, well, Scott, you haven't given me something I can do to get started. Like, honestly, you know, I don't know what more to say in terms of the process. There's the group from a WhatsApp perspective. There's the Facebook group. And, um, you know, in conclusion, I think I've uh, finally got the message across. How do you manage risk? You get the right information and the right partners. What's the plan for tomorrow? And, you know, I can see a couple of people dropped off today. A bunch of the dabblers gave up. Um, maybe the stressors are getting stressed because it's getting to the end of the week. Um, you, got, you need to come through tomorrow. You need to round this up. You need to finish this off. There's no point in climbing Kilimanjaro for four days. It took me five Five days to get to the top of Kilimanjaro. No point in climbing it for four days and not getting to the summit. What's the point? And what is the summit? It's putting it all into practice. It's, it's having a way to get a wealth plan. It's having a way to get clear on what is your why, what is your what, what is your how. It's, it's having this complete. So, you know, please, whatever you do, don't get to base camp of Everest or, 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 or Kilimanjaro and not do the final summit. It just would be silly. <laughs> Trust me. And we're going to have fun tomorrow. I'll clarify any questions that I have for anyone. So let's finish up. Money won't create success. The freedom to make it will. Nelson Mandela, who better could say it? The prize winner for today, Cheryl, you are our prize winner. Woo -hoo! Well done, Cheryl. Love the engagement. Don't get me wrong. I've been going for four days. So I love it when people engage. It keeps me going as well. So well done, Cheryl. If you didn't win, you can still sign up and go to that link. Um, it's time to go to the q and I remind you of all the stuff that you get at the VIP. If you walk away at the end of this week with nothing else but having signed up for the VIP and just getting all the recordings, well, you're at least going to be a hell of a lot further down the road than people who do nothing from no action. And that's me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for everything. Thanks for all the, uh, the nice comments. Congrats to Cheryl and all the wonderful comments that are coming in. Uh, Cheryl, I can see that Shane has put in a, a link for you in terms of um, um, your, your link. If you look in the chat box. Um, I need to jump because um, we've uh, today has been so much value to share. I'm sorry that uh, I've gone over, but I get excited, guys. There's nothing I can do. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing I can do. There's so much to share. Um, I can stand you all day. And, and, and remember what we said with the tip of the iceberg. We literally are just touching the tip of the iceberg. And that's why today I've tried my best to show you how you can capture the rest of the iceberg in terms of where you're at. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, Shane, if you can just... Um, Make sure that you've got any of the questions that are in the chat box. And um, I look forward to seeing you all online tomorrow. And for those of you in the VIP, I'll literally see you right now. Cheers.